Yo, yo, we're getting the stream all set up. As always, appreciate you guys coming in. The early birds, what's up, hey Zeus M. Saludos, good for Ennis. Brown beast of the leaf, trash can emojis. We're just gonna let this cook a little bit right before we get this going, man. What's up, Jo? PBC fighters have been inactive and that money gon' see it. Guapo, what's up? The greatest move he can do. Mad Dog H in the building. Great move by Boots. Oh yeah. We gonna talk about it. We gonna talk about it, y'all. We just kinda just letting everyone come in, get a good seat, you know what I mean? Get in a good spot, you know? Get your popcorn. That's what we doing, right? We getting a good seat. Lee's, Lee's love, what's up, man? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, all right? Get your coffee, get your lunch, sandwich. If you're driving home on the East Coast, getting ready off work. What's up, what's up? R Sturdy, what's up, boss? At least he will always get a rematch from Rematch Room Eddie. Andy Gray, Leon Robinson, peace. I'm gonna give it what, like one, 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 two more minutes, and then we gonna we gonna cook, we gonna cook, and have some fun, man. Vincent Tay, this is great, but why Eddie? Not in the toss, but Bud as well. These are good questions. We're gonna get active today, right? Just like my boy Brandon in here. They're about to keep Boots active, right? King St3, let's go Boots. Let's go Boots. Spicy Curry today in the building. Good move by Jerron. TL Summer 4-0. When, where and when was this announced? About like an hour ago. Yeah. Match room number one by Red MC. What's up, Red? Now he needs to move to 154 by King ST3. To rule. Who do you they have at 147 as opponents? We're gonna get into all that. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna break all that stuff down. So, all right. I think I think everyone got their seats, right? They got their sodas. They got their popcorn. We kind of already know what's going on, right? Right. So, all right, all right. Well, no need for an introduction on the topic. But we'll go straight into it, everybody. What's up, what's up? What up, everyone? It's Ron Good over here at fighthight.com. One of the many interviewers over here. And obviously, you heard the breaking news today, right? Jerron Ennis, who seems so close, so close, but potentially looks like a PBC deal, or potentially fighting for PBC, is now at the home of the zone boxing, matchroom boxing, and we're gonna break down, is this a good move? Is this a bad move? Is this great for boxing? Is it bad for, you know, the, I don't call like PBC predictors, right? Because a lot of people predicted he was going on PBC, he's gonna fight Cody Crowley, he's gonna fight, fight Mario Barras, he's gonna fight Manu Staniosis, the WBA undisputed landscape is all over there, right? But for some reason, he's on matchroom. So, What's up, everybody? Appreciate everyone rocking over here. We're just gonna get straight into the chat, right? And uh, I'm gonna get you guys involved. And we're gonna dissect, was this a smart move or a bad move, right? On what potentially could be the future pound for pound superstar of boxing, right? A lot of people have high hopes for this guy from Philly, but he's been a little inactive, right? Is it his fault? Is Jerron Ennis a detriment of his own doing for being too good? We'll find out. So let me get the chat involved and get you guys all logged in here. All right, I didn't finish roll calling everybody in here. So um, King ST3, now he needs to move to 154. I mean, maybe, right? What fights does he have? Chris, what's up, brother? What's up, champ? This man right here goes on, does a great job doing a whole bunch of interviews. He also contributes over at Fight Hype as well. So please show him some love if you have not already. PBC wasn't promoting him right. Bad move. Because he knows Bud avoiding boots. You think Bud is avoiding boots? Hmm, that's interesting. I know that is a very popular opinion out there. So, 
Can you elaborate why you think Bud is avoiding boots? Netherland, Europe, Amsterdam. Nice, bro. What's up, man? Hey, Suze M. If he signs to PBC, then they say he can't sell. Not a star. Not a pay-per-view draw. ETC. Guapo, he has great talent. Looking forward to y'all bringing clarity to the situation. Fire emoji. Bad move. Matchroom don't have any top 147 fighters. Brody, the goatee. UK bum tour. Connor Ben next, perhaps. I think you're starting to kind of see the potential build up right there, right? Tommy Hunt is probably, probably the closest person so far that has got the potential big fight for Dron Ennis, right? But Holmes says Connor Ben is a bum. Do you guys think Connor Ben is that guy, all right? To pose a threat against Dron Ennis. And Lee's love, Dron Ennis is a good guy. We ran into him at a restaurant last February. It was my daughter's birthday. He took pictures with us and gave her a gift. All right. So I'm going to take a pause, right? Real quick. Um, stick with PBC, Al Heyman, stupid. All right. I'm going to take a pause on the chat. I'm going to come back and, and we're going to break this down. So I wanted to highlight specifically on the news that broke today in my email, right? So I actually was taking a little mini nap. I woke up and just like anyone who saw the news, who's a big boxing fan, was like, what? Dron Ennis signed a match room boxing? So I will see if I can screen share what's on my screen. I'll show you exactly the email that I got. Where are we at? Where are we at? Let me get this. There we go. All right, cool. Let me zoom in. All right, so you can see firsthand. I woke up and I got, welcome to team Dron Ennis right there. Dron Boots Ennis signs a multi-fight promotion to deal with Matchroom. IBF World Welterweight Champion set to return its action this summer. So, we have a time frame. All this Dron is inactive and he hasn't fought for a while and yada yada yada. We know that he is now coming back in summer. Summer where? We don't know, right? Um, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom have won the race to sign one of the boxing hottest properties. As Dron Boots Ennis has signed a multi-fight promotional deal in partnership with Boots Promotion. Ennis, who's 31 and 0, 28 KOs, is slated to make his much anticipated return in the ring in the summer where he will make his first defense of the IBF World Welterweight title. And this kind of recaps all the stuff that he previously did to it. Um, Eddie Hearn made some quotes. I'm excited for this partnership with, uh, no, my bad, Boots said this. I'm excited for this partnership with Eddie Hearn, match from the zone. I can't wait to continue making my mark and become an undisputed world champion. I've been out of ring for a year and I cannot wait to get back in and do what I do best. Entertain the fans, put on clinics. There are blockbuster fights on the horizon for me and I am ready to deliver them. Now, Eddie Hearn mentioned, quote unquote, wow, what a signing. I watched this young man for many years and I've always believed he would become a pound for pound great. And I have no doubt he is already the greatest fighter in the division. To win the race to sign Jerron is a massive coup for matchroom boxing as its own. Holding the IBF title in one of boxing's glamour divisions places Jerron front and center for some of the biggest fights out there in the sport, and we plan to deliver them for him. Jerron has everything needed to become a household name, both in the sport and in the sporting hotbed of his Philadelphia hometown, where we are committed to building him. This is a hint right there. Fight fans can get excited for his return in the summer as he looks to hunt down the biggest fights that will elevate him to the pound for pound list. For the announcement of Ennis' first defense of his world championship will be made soon. All right. So I'm just going to recap from what I read. Simple. Title defense. Maybe, right? I'm just guessing. Right? I don't have sources. I haven't did my research. I think I made one phone call, but uh, I didn't get a pickup. He might be fighting sometime, somewhere, maybe not the summer, but in Philadelphia. It makes sense, right? You got the champion. Matchroom is very notorious for bringing their champions home. And what better way to celebrate this newly crowned guy in a place where it's easy to sell, and it's Philadelphia. Now, his opponent, by the sounds of it, does not sound like a unification fight because we already got news that Mario Barrios will be fighting um, on the Canelo card. I mean, if Staniosis will be fighting on the Canelo card. So that doesn't really give him a lot of options, right? And we all know Terrence Crawford has, quote unquote, the belts, but he has petitioned to move up to 154. So 
I think that right now this multi-fight sign deal is going to lead to a collision course to Conor Ben. Conor Ben has been a guy who's been very vocal about wanting to fight Jerron Ennis. He's been talking about him in his previous fight with Pete Dobson. And he Hearn has been kind of building up this kind of potential showdown where Jerron and Conor Ben could be something in the UK. And it is a huge fight in the UK. All right. Conor Ben hasn't really made a splash in the US. So I think that Conor Ben getting his first title shot against this phenomenal future pound for pound star is massive over there. But right now, the question is, who does he fight now? All right. So I'll pull up the rankings to kind of we can kind of do our detective work. But as fight fans, we want to see something sensible, right? That makes sense for his career. And we're also going to be reasonable because if he's not with PBC, he's probably not going to get the PBC guys, right? And that's mostly the division. So going back to the chat, um, just finished talking about Boots and I said that he should sign with the zone. They stay fighting. Um, Kush Pat, what's up Kush Pat? Guapo wasn't never signed to them. Boots the most fighter in the game by Keddy Peeps. Jerul, how many fight deals? It didn't specify in the email, right? So multi-fight deal, I'm assuming maybe three, right? So um, that's pretty much my only guess. Um, I will be glad when Boots catch that mouse that got out of the mouse trap, bud, um, Donnie. Ennis will be getting Crowley on the IVF purse bid, then co-promotion for the winner between, okay, uh, Stat, uh, Santillian Norman. Stanios is assigned to PBC that that fight could be made as well. Barras fight late 2025. I like this setup that you got going on. Um, I need to get rid of this. I need to move the... I need to get rid of this joint right here. Alright. I like... Th this is a pretty... Dissective idea. It may not exactly go this way, but these are really good things, right? We have heard rumors about Cody Crowley having potential different management and stuff like that. But from the things that I've heard from Cody Crowley's side and things like that, it always kind of came down to some sort of like money thing, right? So I don't think the Cody Crowley fight and Ennis fight will happen because the purse bid got called off. And really, at the end of the day, you got to you gotta get paid to fight Toronto Ennis. Anyone who knows boxing that knows this is a tough fight and you're not going to want to fight this guy for nothing. So... I don't know if the purse bid is going to work out, but if they called it off and they worked the deal out, maybe, maybe Eddie Heron and DeZone threw some money that, that's liking, and there we go. Now we know Matchroom and Top Rank do work together, so the potential of that fight, right, is there. You know, after Crawford vacates the title, moves to 154, and if they fight for the WBO, that's a potential unification fight because Top Rank and Matchroom does do business. Now, Stanios isn't signed to PBC, so the fight can, quote-unquote, be made. We have seen Stanios' work out a potential golden boy fight that was supposed to happen and never happened, so I'm not saying that rules it out. And then Barrios, you know, we'll see, right? So I, I like the direction of this. This is a very sensible breakdown of a potential landscape of the fight, but you have to slide in Conor Ben because Conor Ben is a huge star in the UK. And that's Eddie Hearn's guy. Not saying he wants to serve him up to the wolves, because I think I would favor Jerron Ennis to definitely beat Conor Ben. Maybe, I want to say ease out of disrespect, but like comfortably, right? So, but I like I like this. I like this one a lot from the chat. So I really, really am going to highlight that one. Good, good, good breakdown right there. Um, he's trying to get that Conor Ben fight. I agree. All the Conor Ben comments I'm in, in agreement with. And this and Conor Ben would definitely be a big build up now, you know, and give Conor, you know, give Conor maybe a fight or two to build up and they'll meet into it. Mari Barr's got a tune up fight, so he got to go for Ben. Conor Ben versus Hatton. He'll probably get Conor Ben fight. I agree. I agree with everyone with the Conor Ben. It seems pretty straightforward. Haney versus Boots in the future. Maybe in the future, 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 but I, I just don't really see that fight happen because by the time I think Devin really comfortably enters 147 and wants to challenge the top guys i think boots would be already outgrown 147 he's extremely big for the weight class and um just seeing guys like crawford next to or even like an arrow spence i mean boots is still so much bigger so and um i think at some point he's going to struggle to get into it um 
Good move. Eddie makes fights and he does not mind crossing the street. I do agree. Eddie does cross the street a lot and he does a great job marketing these cross up fights for the boxing fans, you know? So, uh, hence why we got some of these fights like Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. So, which he's a part of. I don't know if you guys know that. I don't think he's avoiding boots, but boots don't bring enough to the table as your wrist brings. I agree. I'm assuming this is the Terrence Crawford thing. So, um, the Terrence Crawford fight is just kind of like a fight where there's just two separate graduating classes. And if you were born like in October, I've always bring this up. If you were born in October, you are more likely going to be the oldest of this graduating class versus the youngest of this graduating class. And I think that that point, Jerron Ennis just missed that and, you know, entering that, that grade. So, um, it's a fight we all want to have, but it just doesn't make sense. Um, my boy Mike on sports, who's another great guy who contributes over here at Fight Hype. Um, I'm gonna highlight that real quick. Um, Fight Hype Super Chat, salute to the homie Fight IQ, bro. I'm so mad I can't grow my hair like that. Shut up, Elms. All right, what's up? Um, Mike has done the Tony Harrison interviews over here at Fight Hype. Um, all the Tony Harrison interviews you saw, talking a little bit about. Alicia, Clarissa, and you know, his whole entire, what he has planned, that's all done by my boy Mike on Sports right here. So please, if you're a boxing guy, show him some love, follow his channel, subscribe. He will be producing more content up, um, over here as well. So big shout out to my guy right there. Um, going back to Andy Gray, Boots, Batters, Ben. I, 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 I got Boots. Yep, I got Boots. UK Bum Tour, definitely. I hope it doesn't become like a whole bunch of guys we've never heard of, right? Like, you know, ranks comfortably somewhere like top 15 on the sanctioning body. He beats them and it goes to Ben. I don't want to see that because I'm, I already feel that Ennis is already at a level where we should start making some of these big fights. So that's what Eddie needs to do. And he needs to deliver as a promoter. So, um, but I don't know who they got over there. Like, I really, I have no clue. Uh, I do like the theories, but... You also have to understand, this guy is gonna be the favorite in every fight outside of what we've already heard of, like, but it's not fine. So, you gotta make it make sense. And these fighters know, they gotta get paid for this. Staying active and getting paid. And that might be the thing. His inactivity for that one year might just be the reason why he signed, right? I'm getting paid, I'm having a hard time getting opponents. This might just be the best move. If Conor Ben is the lick, I'm gonna go get the bag, right? So. Um, Andy Gray boosts his high risk for Crawford. You know, I think he poses in the public eyes the toughest challenge because he's already cleaned out the division. He's beaten Sean Porter. He's washed Errol Spence, you know, respectfully. And you want to see Crawford get challenged. And who's the guy that poses the most threat? His quote unquote mandatory, right? The guy who's bigger than him physically, who has the ability to switch just like Crawford. But like I said, different time frames, you know, and I think out of respect for Crawford, he's just at that point where he's looking a little bit further out and he might get a better fight, you know, for his career. And no fault of that. It's almost like you're looking at that Spider-Man meme when they're pointing at each other. Crawford's been in kind of the same situation. So it's now Boots has that same journey. Um, hopefully he gets some big fights. I think he should headline his hometown. It would sell out. I definitely believe that at some point, because Eddie always does hometown fights, that he will bring boots at Philly. Does he do it in the summer? Summer in Philly? I don't know if that's like a meat mill song, but it just it just makes sense, right? Bring it home, make it an easy promotion build up, see what his market value is at home, and just have him have some fun, right? Uh, King Ease, if Bud wants to have boots fight at 147, at least now, boots has a promotional company behind him that can put some money behind him. Uh, put some behind that. I agree. It, it really just falls down to just what Crawford wants to do, right? If Crawford sees this as a potential sensible fight for business, as well as just you know, a fight, it always has to be business first, then let's do it, right? So we don't know what that looks like. Even with the bum tour, at least he gets to stay busy. I agree. As a Jerron Ennis fan, right, I've been covering him for quite some time. It's good to see the fighters you, you really like to cover and watch back in the ring, right? And the most important thing is he stays sharp, he stays active, and he doesn't have any type of ring rust. Even though he's a gym rat, 
it's different from when you fight in the ring opposed to just staying busy, you know, in the, at the gym, staying in shape and stuff like that. They're two totally different things. Um, JB Holmes, ain't nobody want to see boots. Uh, let me pull the chat back up. Let me get this up a little bit because I feel like it's blocking me. Um, highlighted chat, all right? Let's do that, all right? Uh, JB Holmes, ain't nobody want to see Boots fighting with some bums. We want to see him in with the big fish. The big fish is gonna want to fight. Want to want to have to fight with them, right? It takes two to tango. So obviously Boots is gonna want to fight with all these guys, but on a business sense, it has to work out for everybody. This is a bad move. Eddie has no killers at 147 and 154. So I want to just pause right here before I get back to the chat, and we're gonna just kind of look at the landscape and the division and see potential opponents that may face Jerron Ennis, right? So let me go boxing rankings, right? And then let's go, let's go over here. I think boxing scene has a pretty updated one, right? So we're gonna scroll down to 147. All right, so obviously the landscape is gonna change once Terrence Crawford, we'll find out if he moves up, right? Um, Terrence Crawford owns all three belts outside of the one that he was stripped of, the IBF. So Mario Barres is essentially the interim title and Manu Stanios is, is the WBA regular. So these two guys right here are probably going to be the, the belt holders, right? And then this is going to be vacated. And uh, Giovanni, the guy that beat Alexa Rocha by a landslide recently, is scheduled to fight Brian Norman. All right. So the, num the number 10 guy right here. Let me move this chat out the way. Brian Norman right here, number 10, is gonna fight Giovanni right here. And I don't think they mentioned interim, but top rank usually gets the WBO. So I think that's the plan. So that will probably be the champion for the WBO. Staniosa is gonna be probably elevated to the actual champion. And Mario Barrios, who's the interim, which just means like the substitute until we figure out what goes on. So Barrios and Stanios are both fighting the Canelo card and Giovanni is fighting Norman. So they're all taken. All these guys are taken up. So now none of these guys are available for Jerron Ennis for the summer, right? So what is next? And the first thing we look at is his first highest ranked contender and it's Cody Crowley. Now, Cody Crowley has been in some sort of purse bid situation which has been canceled. And for whatever reason in that sense, is either canceled because they negotiated something or they just they're just they're just not fighting and other plans are being set cody crowley is a pbc fighter so does that mean al is going to allow cody to work with matchroom it doesn't happen too often we rarely see it like an andy ruiz and joshua was a rare occasion um i think sergey derevinchenko versus um triple g but you don't really see that happen too much. And they're not the superstars that they're trying to build. So um, if I go to Cody Crowley's Instagram, I do know, just kind of looking a little bit, just kind of doing a little digging, a little creeping and stuff like that, that he's kind of like hinted like he's kind of back in camp, right? Road work to my world title camp journey, right? Let me zoom in right here, all right? So this is what he put out a week ago. Road to my world title. So I, I don't know. I'm just putting a conspiracy out there, right? This is not facts, right? So take this with a grain of salt. If he's quoting I'm ro uh, my road to my world title, does that mean he's just talking oh, I'm on, my, on my journey, you know, to a world championship? Or is he actually talking about on my road to a world title fight right now? And going back to like I was saying, Cody Crowley's right here at number three. And everyone else is busy. They all have opponents. So what world title? But I don't know, right? I do have relations with the people in, uh, you know, this trainer and them. So I haven't spoke to them. I'm speculating. And for all I know is that you got to get this money right to make that fight. Maybe Eddie got the money right. And now we're talking. So, but this is what Cody posted on his Instagram. So that's maybe one possible opponent now there's some other names in here right um giovanni we already know ranked number one in the wbo so he's busy errol spence 
come on. We know Earl, Earl and Boots ain't happening. Earl called out Fendor uh, a couple weeks ago. Now we start looking at some other names in here, right? And Jen Sa Sasaki, right? I'm going to be transparent with y'all. I don't know who this guy is. So uh, we're going to box wreck him together. This guy right here, number one ranked Japanese fighter in, in welterweight, right? So he's the best welterweight Japanese fighter. At this point, his record holds 16 wins, 15 KO, so he can crack. One loss, one by KO, and, and a draw. So his draw happened a little bit long ago, about a couple years ago, and his loss, yeah, against a 17 year old, a 17 and 0 guy. So this was undefeated versus undefeated. This guy's still undefeated. And what weight does he compete at? Okay, so we got... Oh, I know this guy. I know this guy. All right. This is the guy that got a lot of hype. He's the mixed black guy, right? The Blade, if I'm not mistaken. I would know. But um, that... Does that sound appealing? Number one ranked Japanese fighter. You know, highly ranked in the IBF. By all means, technically... If we remove one and two, one, two, three, four. He's the fourth highest guy underneath the IBF. Does that sound appealing? Underneath that, we got a guy he's already beat, Kieran. And we got Roman Villa, who he did the slow motion on. So the IBF, this is the IBF rankings, right? These are the guys who say, hey, I want to compete for this belt. And I'm moving up the ladder. So does any of that sound appealing? Would you, would you go out, spend some money if you weren't in the Philly area, right? Does any of that sound appealing to you guys? Now I'm gonna get to the chat right now and I'm gonna catch up. Um, high risk, low reward for Bud. Bud, but Bud can sell, uh, what is this? High risk, low reward for Bud, but Bud can call his shots. I'm glad Fendor dodged that so Spence can fight Bud even though he got mauled the first time. <laughs> what big fish was PBC matching boots with? I don't know if they had a big fish. I think they had maybe like a plan to kind of market him around like, hey, maybe we can set up a Barrios fight. Maybe we can try to get Staniosis, right? Things like that. And it makes you wonder, right? Because these fights have been announced, Barrios and Staniosis has been announced a couple days ago. And then Jerron Ennis' matchroom signing was announced today. So did that mean those fights fell off back then? And that's why we got a Barrios and Staniosis fighting, you know, other people besides Jerron Ennis. So, I think we all found out once Barrios and Stance had those opponents and we're like, all right, maybe we're not getting drawn in this fight. I don't really know what happened there, right? I can comfortably feel that there's no way that PBC did not want to have Jerron and this on their roster. It would be insane to think that, right? So we'll go out, ask some questions. Hopefully we get some answers, right? And I'm sure someone's already probably on their way trying to get Bozy and, and Jerron to speak on this type of stuff. Boots versus Haney. Definitely agree, Boots and Haney. Boots versus Virgil. A fight that we all want to see. Virgil's at 154 now, so maybe that's a fight we'll see later on. They are both now officially on the zone platform. So the question is, can Golden Boy and Matchroom work that out? They, they, they are working with Ryan and Devin out, but they still kind of got promotional issues. Who on PBC match tough besides guys who had to beg for them to make the fight? Nice Spence. Um, it's obviously subjective, but you know, some guys do have an easier road to the title and then some guys have a tougher road to the title. I think Stephen Fault is a prime example of a fighter who didn't have easy fights on the PBC side and kind of worked his way after undefeated fighter, undefeated fighter, undefeated fighter. So eventually he fought anyway. So, um, Sabrina Matias. Oh, I see what you're doing there. I see. So we're thinking about bringing Sabrina Matias, the boogeyman of 140 versus the boogeyman of 147. I mean, do you like that? So Sabrina Matias, Connor Bent, and Virgil Ortiz in the zone. That's a hefty lineup of three. I just don't think those three, those three are happening in that way. Look at my post before you said it. <laughs> Haney knew. That's why he wants all the belts at 140 now. Boots versus Haney next year at 147. Haney edges boots though, only one dethroning Haney's tank. Wow, that's a hot take. That is a really hot take right there. Uh, Connor Ben is still banned for being a drug cheat. 
I mean, he did fight here in Vegas. We did cover it. Man, we lost Sean Zatel. I knew he left. Yeah, he did his own thing, my guy. Mr. Banks, I don't know. Only thing is Connor can't fight in the UK. Tank can't beat no top fighter. That's why you don't fight them. Ortiz is not with Matchroom. He's with Golden Boy. Uh, Connor can't fight in the UK. He still has to sort his drugs mess out. You know, you guys are right. You can't, whatever the whole theory is to fight in the UK, you're right. So maybe the fight will be here, a thousand percent. Tank over everybody. And he's not beating boots. Sup, Red? Riley Fred, Haney would never even fight Boots, and especially now. Clarissa Shields versus Thurman. Ha, <laughs> you got jokes. Haney's definitely beating Boots, bro. Yo, Haney versus Boots is starting to kind of flood this chat. Do you guys really want to see that fight? Like, anytime soon? I mean, it's an interesting fight, don't get me wrong, but that's a tough fight for Devin Haney. Not saying he wouldn't challenge it and wouldn't do it, but that's, that's a tough fight. So he needs to stay more active and not doing nothing from on the other side. Sometimes you do have to take that activity, man. Based on what we've seen, it's very likely Devin or Tia would fight Boots. Uh, you think Tia will fight Boots? I mean, he did call out Crawford, right? So um, Boots by stoppage, he is too strong. I like Boots by Haney beats Boots at 148. Wow, there's a lot of Haney beating Boots, okay. Uh, thank you, Paul. There are no big fights for Boots that match him. As in right now, I don't think there's any big fights for Jaronis. I don't know what fight Eddie can set him up besides Connor Ben. And if they can't get the fight in the UK like the chat was mentioning, that quote-unquote he has his issues out there. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I just, I don't know what Eddie can, what is the plan, Eddie? Like, this is what the show's about. What it means for the welterweight landscape and what are you going to do, Eddie? So... I hope they set the fight up too. I support Boots, but let's be real here. Crowley outpriced himself. This see, this is a double narrative, right? Did he outprice himself or did he get lowballed? And it's subjective, right? So when you fight a guy like Jerron in this, are you going to take the lowest low? You know, like oh, you know, here's a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. No, I'm not saying that's low, right? And what I'm saying is the potential right a, a career tough fight and if you lose can kind of be a detriment to your career and how boxing set up a loss destroys a lot of stuff do you take that fight right now or do you take that fight because maybe there's not a lot of opportunities out there for a lot of big money fights and you should take this fight because you don't have a lot of options of making x amount of money and if you don't if you do lose elsewhere you kind of like screwed yourself so you have to make the right decision so did he outprice himself? Is Cody Crowley's value at the right amount of money? Or is he just playing the game? He's like, nah, man, that's Deron Ennis. I need my money if you want me to fight this guy. Because I know that that is a tough guy. And we're not just going to fight this guy for nothing. We need our money. We need an opponent drawn, when well, we're going to need our money. So, Rocha or Stats, uh, Stantillion? Uh, to fight Deron, you mean? Because we already know who won that fight. Uh, I'm assuming that's what you meant. Either or, but Stan, uh, Stan Tillian has a fight already with Brian Norman, so that fight's not going down, at least anytime soon. Also, Connor has no UK license. Crowley probably staying in Canada. <laughs> Ryan, you a fool. Haney ain't got enough power to F with Boots, and Boots can do anything. Haney. Boots got some power, man. Like You guys need to recognize that Boots is probably... like It's a lot... You know, for De let, let Devin do 140, let him fill out, and then let him even get his toe on 147. To go straight to Boots. Not saying he wouldn't, but that's a bad dude, man. They'll fight in Saudi. Oh. Big brain. Big brain, right? Connor can't fight in the UK, but maybe we can get drawn in this and Connor Ben for the bag in Saudi Arabia. I mean, that's the trend, right? The bag in Saudi Arabia, so. I like this. The chat is extremely intelligent, first and foremost. I want to just compliment everyone because this makes the flow work a lot easier, right? And I'm not sitting here acting like I know everything in boxing. I don't. A lot of stuff I talk to people. I get my information from a lot of knowledgeable people, way more knowledgeable than me. Um, or you're just talking to the sources when I do these interviews and I bring them out. So I like to 
put my theories together. And sometimes if I know, I know. But in this case, I don't know. So the chat is extremely intelligent and we're formulating some really good ideas. So I really appreciate you guys just rocking with me and just just being really intelligent with you guys' breakdown. So um, Boots versus Ben would be fire. Thank you, Riley. Why is this nerd talking about boxing? Because I can, SD Hydro, and you're watching. So, no, but I appreciate you in here. You know, that's why. But I've been doing interviews for about, like, probably getting close to a decade. So, that's why. If you've heard a lot of interviews on Fight Hype, it's probably my voice. You're just seeing my face. That's why. If he can, then he should would. Uh, if he can, then he should would be a great fight and potential great one for Boots. Bud don't want no smoke. Boots versus me machine incoming. Yeah, I guess I guess we can do that, right? I guess we can do that. Do you guys like that fight? Which is understandable. Everybody say Haney doesn't have power, but nobody's just walking him down. I mean, I'll tell you this though. Boots is a tough fight. I'm telling you. That's a tough fight, regardless of whoever it is. I like this move. Um, Haney's my guy, favorite to watch, but Boots kills him right now. Haney split decision, not unanimous over Bud by Spencer. Bloodshot, what's up, man? What's up, my guy? Boots will probably move to 154 by the time Haney gets to 147. I, I second that. I don't see... I don't see them lining up. Uh, Barney has respectful power. Oh, I think you mean Haney. You're not gonna walk him down. Bill's gonna throw him. I think you mean Boots has respectable power? You're not gonna walk him down. Bill's gonna throw him a towel. That's what you meant. Got it. Uh, that don't bring nothing to cop out, honestly. When you're the man, every fight is a big fight. I mean, right? That's what they say, right? All right, let me, let me speed through this. There's a lot of you guys in here, all right? Haney, matchroom is a better choice. Explain, question mark. If you're asking me, is it a better choice? As opponents, I mean, I don't think so. But to stay active, maybe maybe those guys couldn't they couldn't come to negotiations, right? So we don't know the story. So if you got guys that aren't kind of cooperating, or you guys just can't make a deal, then you just have to do something. And maybe this is the best thing that they could have done, even though that it might not have the most marketable options, right? Because you're definitely not going to get a Spence fight at, at Matchroom, even though that we all kind of suspect that fight might not happen. You're for sure like 100% not getting the fight now, if that's the case. You so cool, dude. Thanks, Bloodshot. Such a troll, man. Boots needs to focus on being active and being visible. He has a great style that most people will gravitate towards. I agree. Boots probably is one of the most friendly, eye-pleasing, casual fighter out there, right? Especially that last fight. What up, Jax? Hey, yo, appreciate you rocking with me. Boots versus Ben, Whiskey Daniels. Uh, I got Boots. Shout out Mike on sports. I agree, Derek Lincoln. What's up, Derek? JoJo walked down Haney. Boots, yo, is this show becoming Jerron Ennis versus Devin Haney? Is this what you guys really want? Like, I don't know if I want to rush to that fight. You guys want to rush to that fight already? I mean, it's two names, right? So, um... Uh, Who's versus the winner? Taylor versus Catterall. That's a 140 fight, right? Uh, that's a stretch. I don't really want to see that. Do you want to see that, Derek? He's smart to sign with match for more opportunities and will be able to stay active. At least he can stay active. And we get that's what I'm saying. He gets some money, stay active, and do his thing. CW, only person who can get away with fighting nobody's tank and, or anybody associated with Canelo. For right now, that's what we have seen to be proven to be true. Like those two guys can draw regardless of the opponent. It may not be the biggest draw sometimes if they don't fight someone, but they can at least at least get a crowd together. A sensible, sizable crowd. Washed a weight drain Earl Spence. You talking about Crawford? Is that what you're talking about, Johnny? Boost is more of a switch hitter than Crawford. A more natural switch hitter, possibly. Possibly. People have suspected that Crawford's more of a softball. What's there nothing respectable about that ass whooping? He talking about Crawford. Every, everyone right here, he, he talking about Crawford being Spence, just so y'all know. Mike on sports. Crawford is a softball for the most part. I agree. Boots is more fluent and slicker and packs a bigger punch. 
Uh, in comparison to what, Bud or Haney? I'm just catching them. Oh, Crawford's, is, okay, I get it. Boost is more fluent and slicker and it packs a bigger punch. I don't know who packs the bigger punch, but someone who has sparred, right? I'm gonna throw this out. Um, maybe I can play a part of the interview, right? He sparred Boots and Crawford, right? And I'm not saying that this is the gospel, right? This is one person's experience. Freddie Rojas, <laughs> right? I did an interview with him three months ago. And let me play it. And this is what he had to say about when he stepped in the ring and he sparred Crawford getting ready for Spence, which sparring, like it could be two different phases, right? Crawford getting ready to spar Spence as Pete Crawford, right? And um, he gives his breakdown about what his experience were when he sparred those two guys. For me, it shows me as a fighter that he, he sees something in me that sometimes, you know, as a young fighter, you don't see in yourself. So when he came inviting me back and then apparently in a dressing room at Kenny's fight, he kept saying, hey, I'm gonna I'm I'm get it back. I'm gonna get it back from Freddie, which meant a lot to me, you know, uh, knowing that, you know, I did, I caused, I, I did something to make him think. So mm -hmm. that was a great experience for me. And if he keeps inviting me out to keep doing sparring, I will always say yes, you know. There's some days he might do good, some days I might do good. But, you know, the, the, I always like it when sometimes when you get a top level guy and, and they give me problems because as a young fighter, sometimes you get, you have too much pride. Yeah. And you stop, I'm like, I'm stopping everybody and stuff like that so it's good to sometimes get humbled a bit and, and, and go back to the to the drawing boards in the gym during sparring and be like okay this is what i need to knock uh, like a punch back into reality so yeah. which i think is very good you know obviously he's probably gonna be fighting spence you know coming up i mean yeah. does anything change from that like does he does he stop him quicker oh yeah, this is his breakdown right? <laughs> yeah. so yeah i, I think uh but got some bad news for you yeah you Messed up that that happened. Yeah, um, Spire Boots. I, it was actually for that camp okay. as well for uh, 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 for the one I fought here in Cosmo Falcon. So obviously, you know, the, the question I got asked, uh, you know. Yeah, the question everybody will always ask, who is better, who is harder. I mean, it's just, you know, overall, it's just your honest opinion, right? I mean, there's going to be size, right? Jerron's bigger, obviously. Mm -hmm. Terrence is more experienced. Like, these are obvious takes that, mm -hmm. but just, you know, why would maybe Terrence or why would Boots? Um, so, like I said, they're both tremendous fighters. Uh, they fight two whole different, they have two whole different styles, but kind of both fight the same, right? Uh, being in there with first with Bud and then being in there with Ennis probably what two weeks later when I went down to Philly um, I've always said I think uh, I've always said to everybody I think uh, Bud will take it off because the experience he has and why because like when I was in there and the things he has so much as the rounds go by and he sees me touching him on one thing it's not going to happen again to the, sec the second round he's always going to switch it up which causes me to think and, you know, obviously, you can't compare Ennis to Bud. He's still newer to the game, mm -hmm. you know. Um, he ha I, don't, I don't think he's fought in too much of a top level as Bud has. But um, I just go off of experience just for <laughs> Bud in that case. But they both hit tremendously hard. Bud's body shots are crazy. But, you know. You're the second, the, like, within two weeks, someone talked about Terrence's body shots. Yeah, they're crazy, <laughs> man. Okay. I would recommend someone. Go ahead. You, you, you go in the ring and get hit with a body shot one of those, man. <laughs> they, yeah, Jenga. Yeah, man. They make, you, they make you rethink life for a second. Like, dang, man. Why am I doing boxing, man? I don't think this is for me. But, no, it, it was good. Like I said, those are the sparrings that you need to involve as a fighter. Because if, if, I, if I spar with guys either my level or even lower, it makes you, you're like, you'll think you're an animal, that you're unstoppable. But then once you get with those top level athletes like that, you'll be like, okay, <laughs> let me relax a little bit. But even with the, like, you know, not going into sparring and not picking like who's, you know, better in a sense of whatnot, but it's just like your reaction to Terrence is like night and day difference from yeah. Boots. Like, yeah. I, it's not a, I don't respect Boots. Obviously this is probably something you have to face. Maybe he'll move out in a division before you guys maybe even cross and maybe, but. No, but that, that I've always said, that would be a great fight for us to happen one day as well. I mean, two of the best athletes that will happen. I mean, it probably might not happen at 47, but it might happen at 54. Like I said, I'm still growing. Shoot, when I was amateur, I left at 52. I was barely making 152. So there's more. This is the Freddie Rojas interview I did, if you're interested. He also talked more about how when he sparred Crawford. But I, I just wanted to play the bit where um, he just talked about his experience between the two. And I think that um, it doesn't tell the story, right? It's sparring, but it's another... 
it's another um, I, right? You know, just another person that has a sensible perspective that we can kind of like analyze. Um, off the hook girls, what's up? Boots needs marketing help to become popular with casual. And then his fights will make sense. See, like, it's a, it's a business first, right? So he's kind of in this like situation where he's like, he needs big fights to make him marketable because he's not quote unquote marketable as they would say to the casuals. So um, hopefully Eddie can do something. And, and this is what signing to a promoter is, make you marketable, right? Crawford's 36, he's about two fights left, three if he wants to go for Undisputed 154. We need Haney and Tito to move up now. Haney came in 165 against Regis. He can make 147. Tito was talking about moving up to fight Barros. Why not Boots? I think just Devin and Tito just need to face each other, right? I think these two guys have already... Um, actually, I'm going to finish this, and I got a super chat that I needed to read, and I don't want to forget. But um, Bubs, um, he can make 147. Uh, yeah, so I just... Devin and Tito just need to face each other, like, at this point. Like... I don't really want to get into the whole Boots versus Devin until Devin and Tio fights because that's kind of like who should fight each other, right? Like that's that's really like if he gets past Ryan and we don't get the Tank fight or Shakur fight, then Devin and Tio are two guys that like it just makes sense. So um, where is it? Uh, I got a two dollar super chat. Daniel Navarrete, um. Firestick Canelo fights until he fights Benavides 100. I think you said this before. What's up, Daniel? Appreciate you showing some love. Um, I, I think a lot of people speak for themselves. If Canelo is not fighting David Benavides, right? You know, it's it's not, quote unquote, the best fighting the best, right? Do you feel Mungia versus Canelo is fighting the best versus the best? Ah, it's a sensible fight. It makes sense. But I don't think it's the fight. And the fight we all want to see is Canelo versus David Benavides. So... If you want a fire stick, I'm not promoting fire stick. I'm not saying, I mean, we're diehard fans, right? We're going to watch the fights, you know? So, but where you're going to spend your money, I know where you're going to spend your money, Daniel. And that's where everyone's going to spend their money. So hopefully we can get that. Uh, Boots not being Crawford. Stop it. If Bud only gets got two, this is, this is turning into a whole Bud, Boots, Devin Haney, but I, I respect it. Um, if Bud only got two fights left, he needs to go for Gusto. If he can't get Fedora, um, match him off for the WBA, then try for Genebeck for under, Unified 160, retire, five division champ, keep it moving. I mean, he can, but those names is not what he proclaims as marketable big fights, right? That came out of his mouth. He wants big fights. Is Majimov and Jenner big, big fights? My opinion, no, but I don't think he's gonna go for that. Raymond for, for Raymond for success probably encouraged Boots to try Eddie Hearn. You know, what's crazy is I covered at, um, Raymond for when he first, like at his signing, right? And I just saw him last week at the Richardson Hitchens fight. And it's just crazy. There's just, Full circle to see someone who just signed their first deal and then now they're a world champion talking about unification and things like that. So shout out to Raymond Ford, um, Camden, New Jersey, like you did it. Um, you put on for not just New Jersey, but Matt Schoon for being the first homegrown American fighter that Eddie signed from zero to a champion. And he got it like straight up the tough way. Purse bid, tough fighter from another country that hits hard and on the scorecards, like how to get the knockout. So shout out to Raymond Ford, man. That that kid is special, you know. So shout out to him. I want to see those Shiki Foster fight next. Eddie is gonna try to make the Crawford play. Okay, if Eddie makes that move, Eddie is the man, right? I don't know how he's gonna do it, but if he can do it, Saudi Arabia bag. I mean, I won't be able to go out there. I'll be sad, right? Because I've covered. On Fight Hype, I believe I got like the first, like, not the very first video, but the first like 15 videos on Fight Hype on Jerron in it. So he's been someone I've been covering for a very long time. So um, if that fight happens, I'm just going to be a fan, right? I got a lot of um, admiration about both those guys. Who fight on the 5v5? I don't know. But Raymond Ford don't want to be on that. That's what he said. He said, nope, I don't want to be on that. I don't know where you're reading those, but you should read the recent. Tell me about the chat. I'm trying to catch up on the chat, Johnny. If that's supposed to be Johnny Bravo. Um, 
No one stops Crawford. I think he moves to 154. Stops Spence again. Danny Charlin rides off in the sunset. Uh, Roly stops Crawford. <laughs> Roly wants everybody. Right? So Bud should fight for the belt. He was stripped of the of was emo to boots. Makes no sense. I think it's just unfortunate, right? I mean, that's just boxing politics. Crawford's nice, but I'm sorry, I can't see him or anyone has ever ever fought beating John Ennis. That's what a lot of people want to see. Crawford's clearing out the 140 division. If he can get 20 million for Crawford, Boots, Bud would do it. Crawford hasn't been in the ring uh, with enough live dogs. I mean, it doesn't mean he won't have an opportunity. I mean, I mean he doesn't have the skill set to do it, right? But experience plays a big factor. And like, if you want to favor a guy to win the fight, right? If you want to be, because it's subjective, you can't be objective. If you want to be kind of fair, right? If you're looking at the whole situation, I mean, Bud has the more experience. So you may have, you're going to have to favor Terrence Crawford in that fight, you know? And that's, that's probably where I would lean, but I'm not counting boots out. But using my brain, my IQ, things like that, I mean, just simply, like, if I had to do a betting odds, I mean, Terrence would have to walk in there as the favorite. Fendora smokes Bud, but outside of that, I got Bud being everybody at uh, 154. You got Fendora? You got Fendora? All right. Right now, CW. You and me, right? I got Bud, all right? Not a crazy pick, but I got Bud. So, if you write and they fight, you're the GOAT. Only thing stopping Roly is the universe. I agree. Nothing stops Roly unless the universe. Uh, KO's Norman. I think I favor him over Norman too. Nobody beats Crawford. Um, let me see. Let me fix this chat. Um, why cannot scroll on my chat? Let me see. Oh, okay. That's why. Nobody beats Crawford. Uh, Fandora is gonna be if they fight. Sir, it's not Brian Norman. It's Brian Norman Jr. The future of division. Love is not a fight a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. My bad. My bad. Yo, there's this. Uh, Brian Norman sparred both those guys. That's actually, you know, if I ever see Brian Norman, and I think there's an interview already out there, but he didn't really say much. Brian Norman sparred Jerron Ennis and Bud. So he's someone that can have an opinion. You know, he shared the ring with both those guys. All right. Um, all right. Let me speed through. There's a lot of this. Um, all Crawford's best wins are over guys who are handicapped or downhill. His resume is overrated. I don't think Crawford's resume is overrated. I just don't think his opponents are very marketable um, in a sense where they're very memorable names um, and has a lot of casual appeal. I mean... Can't really say Sean Porter's a nobody, right? You know, you, you can't really say he was handicapped, right? I don't really like doing the handicap stuff, right? Because if you sign the contract and, and you go in there, but I get what you're saying, Riley. I do because it's Spence crash and all that stuff. But Terrence has been consistent, so I'm gonna have to continue to just favor Terrence right now. He's been a duck boots facts. All right, all right. Um, let me see. Crawford pound for pound number one. How about Tim Zhu? Tim Zhu versus Boots. But see, Tim has a relationship with PBC, right? So that just comes to the idea of like, can Duran Ennis actually get something marketable? Fedor's not beating Bud, even Spence beats him. He is chinny and he's easy to hit. Tim Zhu is catching him clean. I think that the cut affected Tim Zhu, and I feel that the fight played out based off the cut. And I can't use as an excuse, but it definitely is for sure a playing factor why that fight was a lot harder for Tim Zhu. Does Fendora get all the credit in the world? Absolutely. Did the cut affect Tim Zhu? Absolutely. Should we get a rematch? Absolutely, right? So, Roley destroys everyone at Bantamweight. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, he's a bigger guy, but hey, we see Manny Pacquiao move up and do things, right? Um, who has Boots beaten? He hasn't beaten anyone, any anyone or any different than what Conor Ben has, right? So that's why the Conor Ben fight makes sense, right? So Porter's style is tailored for someone like Boots to beat. You're saying you're favoring Sean Porter. If there was a Sean Porter 
fight boots, Sean Porter would beat boots. Maybe, right? You know, I don't, I mean, we haven't really seen boots in a fight that we can compare to that. So I'm probably favor boots, but that's just a style liking, you know, that's all. Crawford fought a man that was dehydrated and he had plenty of chances to fight Manny Pacquiao, but the fight never came to fruition because Crawford, and that's why I don't consider Crawford pound for pound. Respect. I respect your opinion, you know. You don't feel that Spence was at his optimal prime, right? And so because of it, prime to prime matters. And because of that, you feel that Crawford beat an out of prime Spence. I'm not mad at that opinion. I think it's fair. I think that, and it's just... It, it doesn't matter, right? I, I would favor Crawford beating Spence back then. It'd probably been more competitive or not, you know, but who has Crawford beaten? I mean, we already went through this. Earl Spence, Sean Porter. I mean, the names don't... I don't know what more, like, I, I, I just don't, like, there is this consistency that Spence has fought these guys, right? But then Crawford hasn't fought nobody's, right? So, like, when you really strip down look at it, right, you're looking at it like, okay, Spence beat uh, Kell Brook first. Spence beat Sean Porter first. So those were the better, you know, quote-unquote um, times, right, I, which I would agree. I think that he was able to get those fights when Crawford was playing the politics. Can you really fault Crawford when he's on the side of the street and things like that? That's when the fans kind of figure, you should have signed the PBC and you should have did this and you should have did that. I don't know, but I can agree that Spence fought the better version of Kell Brook. I can agree that he fought the better version of Porter because he fought him before he was beaten. Like, I'm just using Mayweather philosophy, right? When someone beats them first and they're never the same after. But that also isn't true because there's a lot of fighters that get better after a loss, right? And have evolved and has changed. Manny Pacquiao's taken many losses in his past before, but then later came up to beat all these great Hall of Fame legends. So I don't want to say like losses define people. You get triangle theories all the time, right? The Duran, the Hearns, the, the Leonard, the Haglers, right? Or even a better one, um, you got Iron Barkley who beat Tommy Hearns. But Tommy Hearns flatlined Duran. But Duran beat Iron uh, beat Barkley, right? So, like, that's the only unfortunate part about this is that we're trying to determine who is better by what. The only way is just to have them fight, right? Who cares about dissecting that? We can get them to fight. But that's the problem. We can't get them to fight. I like Porter. He was a dog. LOL. Boots can fight Virgil T since he's on the zone. I agree. Boots is slick. Uh, but Crawford is mean. I gotta see Boots under some actual pressure. I wanna see Boots, like, just, why rush him to butt, right? Get him, you know, get him some fights, and if, if he can become marketable, then I don't see why Bud won't fight him. But that's part of Eddie's job, is to make him marketable. Boots is too versatile for Porter. I agree. I would favor Jerron in a hypothetical. Josh Taylor fight would be great for his fan base. Do you really want to see Josh Taylor versus John S? I mean, I guess as a marketable name, it's better than what we pulled up on his bo on the box rec I mean, boxing scene rankings, right? Spence fans are now Boots fans. I think I think boxing fans are Boots fans, right? But I get what you're saying. They're fans because they saw Spence get beaten, so now they want to see a guy that goes and fight. But All right, I agree. I want to see him versus Virgil Ortiz. Ortiz at 154 now. He is. So he would have to move up for it. He goes and fights Jai Taylor overseas and he gets a UK following. How about Blair the Flair? I wanted to see this fight. I wanted to see this fight. Blair's fighting Adrian Broner. You know why I wanted to see this fight? Because I caught this footage. I didn't set this up, all right? This wasn't a setup. I didn't like, hey, Blair, go, go over Boots, Jerron, and let's fight him. Okay. I wanted to see this fight. Uh, Blair. Um, we're going to go down memory lane two years ago, all right? I'm going to cut off the Street Fighter music, and we're going to go down back into time, all right? Um, here we go. This is a fight I wanted to see at that time. Fuck out, right? Cut it out. Love with me. No, 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 no
There is levels. There's levels. There's levels to this shit. I'm definitely not here. What was his name? Hey, hey. I'm the only one. Hey, I'm the only one that fought against the odds, dog. I'm the only one that fought. It wasn't expected. You don't have a level, so. We'll see, though. What do you think if Blair beat Adrian Broner? Hear me out. I'm not, I'm just, if he beats Adrian Broner, would that build enough clout markedly, right? For the casuals, for boots to face? Or would Adrian Broner dare fight boots? No. What do you guys think? He can't stand it. He can't take the great one. Me, me. Oh yes, trust me, trust me. Things are gonna change, baby. No, 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 no. Blair, my man, he's still my man. Blair's just talking, that's my man. I'm not just talking. I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm walking. No, I'm walking too. No, 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 no,
What do you think? If Blair beats Adrian Broner, does that make sense for Blues to face him? You know what it is. This ain't wrestling. I, I, I put people to sleep, you feel me? He ain't putting shit to sleep. He ain't putting shit to sleep. He's gonna be gone. Oh, yeah. What color coffee you want? He dressed mighty, mighty, mighty swell right now. Oh, yeah. What coffee you want? When I'm finished, you want to cut that whole beard off, dog. What coffee you want? You ain't gonna cut that whole beard off. What coffee you want? Oh, you think you want to cut that whole beard off? Let's prove it. We don't need that. Let's see. 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 This is a um, what you call it. Let's see what the chat thinks. Or am I am I just throwing out something stupid? And the boxing fans don't want to see it, right? All right. So Blair is a joke, all right? Boost told him boxing ain't WWE. You're gonna get hurt, all right? Blair Cobb sit down. Blair Cobb is a certified clown. Dang y'all. See y'all don't y'all don't y'all don't want to see. Like, this is what Blair does. He, he entertains, he sells, and granted, if you don't like him, what would you want to see? And get beat up, right? That's, 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 that's the selling point. Boots not getting a big fight anytime soon, even with Eddie and his team. Shout out to Philly. Boots says he's got to get on his level. Boots should take his own advice for getting a fight against Bud. Boots versus Blair, 50-50, okay. I got I got a believer of making this right. All right, right now it's one against twenty no's. Right, Boots, Boots violates that man. <laughs> Blair chasing a check, but he don't have no paper. He about to fight Adrian Broner right now. Right, right. No, am I am I hallucinating? This don't sound good to y'all. Blair's finished. Tired of these TikTok boxers fighting for war ties that they deserved it. It's killing the sport. Matias and Pitbull could change. That is all. Fight. That is a hundred percent yes in everyone in the chat. If anyone doesn't want to see Matias and Pitbull, if no one wants to see, if anyone says they do not want to see Matias Pitbull, don't appreciate a bloodbath boxing match. That's all I can say. I'm not hating, but you just don't like that. That's what that fight is. You're definitely a casual fan for saying that. Battle rap Rob, for real, for real. You don't like a good buildup. I'm not. I would favor Jerron in this, right? I would personally. I'm not not saying that I don't favor Duran, but I like a good buildup. And the idea is to build Duran into a, a position where he's marketable. Fans see him. They heard about this. You can get, let's say they fight and Blair loses the fight, but the buildup's great and the trash talking's great. And then there's like a humbling moment. Like that is, that's part of helping Duran Ennis, right? He could fight a killer, but an unknown killer that nobody knows doesn't really do as much. So that's just me, just my opinion. All right, so the Villa fight wasn't a big fight. I mean, look, if Boots was able to fight the guy, let's think about this. If I go up to someone casual, right? I'm not saying as a boxing fan that wasn't, right? Villa beat Rashidi Ellis on the undercard of Javante Tank Davis, which people did see. But how many people walked away and remembered Roman Villa by name, right? 
What about if someone was like, look, Drawn End is about to fight the guy, if Blair was able to do it. Drawn's about to fight the guy that just beat Adrian Broner. How much easier is that to convince someone to watch? Dron Ennis, who you don't really know, right? I'm talking to someone. Dron Ennis, great fighter, crazy crew fighter. He's about to fight, um, there's this other guy named Rashid Ellis. He was on Golden Boy, which is Oscar De La Hoya's uh, fighter. And he fought this other guy, and he was a tough guy. Um, and and uh, it was a great fight, and you dropped, like, that is such a long talking fight. Or, like, there's this really good fighter that you need to see. And he's about to fight the guy that just beat Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner? The can man. The guy that fought Pacquiao. You know? You know? Okay. Okay. That, that's all I'm saying. I'm just... Hear me out. All right? I might be selling it. I might... This might be a stretch. I know you guys are hardcore boxing fans, so you guys don't want to see it. But I'm just saying, like, it could maybe happen. All right? Um... Blair Cobbs is the true face of boxing. I've never heard Boots talk that much. Yeah, if you, if you want to see it, it's on Fight High, Caleb. Uh, I got that. I got that footage right there, man. Uh, that wasn't here in Vegas. Blair can box a little, but it's trash against an elite boxer. No, bet on Blair. That was good trash talk. Uh, Romero versus Cobbs. A bottle of clowns. Blair's not beating AB. Hell no, Boots might have to go to 154. Adrian's done, Roley versus Adrian. Boxing needs Roley versus Broner. Blair about to punish AB. Blair beats AB, but keep his ass away from Boots. Adrian would never fight Boots. I think the fight will be more entertaining than Ryan Garcia. Bunch of yappers all talk. If Broner beats Blair, well, well, Broner would be in a position to go after a big money fight, and that's not Boots. You're right. You're right, right? That was hopeful thinking, right? Broner is not about to fight Boots, so I agree. But that makes me wonder, does Blair then, if he beats Broner, overlook Boots and say, I cannot move past you because I fought a Mark with Winning, right? I don't know. Maybe maybe I have to go find Blair. Maybe, only if you guys want it. Maybe, maybe. I can ask some questions. Uh, the funny thing is Adrian Brown the only one I can see that would actually do that shit. Boost to humble him to turn up. No. Nah. That's not big. Blair, no flare, corn cobs. Ennis versus cobs is mismatch. Blair is a certain... Okay, y'all don't want it. Nobody want it. They don't know. Nobody want to see that shit. Boost, nobody want to see this shit. Nobody. Nobody want to see this. All right. All right. All right. All right. Blair had boots shut. Okay. Blair... Would be Boots' biggest fight, though. Okay, He's, you're with me, right? Blair Cobb's finna get turned into Chick-fil-A salad. <laughs> Boots by KO. Boots by Blair. Okay. Blair is not trash. Boots just overly humble youngin that need to turn up. Bully boxers. Boots destroys Blair on their three. Blair talked me into thinking he's the best. 50-50, <laughs> he's tripping. All right, I'm kind of getting a little bit. Danny Garcia versus Boots needs to happen. They ain't gonna happen. Danny's already shut that shut that down. That's what I want to see. Bloodbath. Boots versus Broner would be funnier. Hey, what up, Ben? Ben Thompson, owner of Fight High. He's on my side, right? Boots versus Broner would be funnier. I don't know why we cannot talk about Boots versus the winner of Blair and Broner. Make it happen, right? Because the key is making a marketable, right? At the end of the day. Um, what we got? Uh, Boots only challenged his Crawford and Spence. Wasn't talking to height, was talking about the tank fan in the chat. <laughs> Boots is the real boogeyman. Them, them the two real monsters of the division. Blair needs the Broner win. Roller versus Broner. Boots versus Morale. That's... Oh, my bad. I was... Boy, you almost gave me a heart attack, Charles. I read too fast. Boots and Morale are the most avoided boxers right now. That's what they're saying. Morale has 10 fights. What you mean he uh, he's avoided? Uh-oh. What you mean he's avoided? I mean, Benavides has kind of said that they would fight him. But that, you know... I've heard both sides of the story. And it's fighting Broner because it's a skull moment. Eddie will probably get Boots beat by some unknown.
Okay. I'm gonna I'm speak on this comment that Ben left, all right? My personal opinion. My personal opinion, right? Matthew Eddie Hearn has been named rematch room because a lot of their fighters, if not, has been beaten relatively by unknown people that we never heard of, right? Um, or controversial fights. The big one that people have been de split debating about is that the Richardson Hitcher fight should have went to Gustavo's Lemos, all right? And I'm gonna keep it a thousand percent. I had a YouTube Gustavo's Lemos like a month ago to, to know who he was. So, um, Terry Harper was a person who they, you know, at the time, Alicia Baumgartner was not really a big name in female boxing and that stuff. Beaten. Um, there's a trend. Andy Joshua. No one really was checking Andy Ruiz. Beats him. So, does Eddie Hearn find a way to get Jerron Ennis a loss? That would be the most egregious thing ever in boxing, modern boxing because this dude has so much potential to be a modern boxing superstar to get beaten like that. So, um, but that's the, that's like, that's like, the positive sign is if you're a boxing man, who gives a, right? Who cares? That's what you want. You want two guys to fight in the best and give these unknown guys an opportunity to show that these guys that are getting a lot of attention and all this type of stuff, a real test. These undefeated unknown guys, stop the hype. That's what we want, right? Stop, quote unquote, believe in the hype. Stop it, right? These guys need to be tested and we have these type of fights over here at Mastering. So that's that's what happens, right? So can they keep a, keep a star and continue to build a star? They haven't been able to prove that in the US. They do have Anthony Joshua. They have gotten them beaten quite a few times. So um, that would be wild. If, if Eddie Hearn was able to find that or that happened, that would permanently feel like Match Room is cursed forever. So, that's fact. Nobody knew Villa until Boots fight. Adrian's a gatekeeper. Mexican American. Every everybody can get it. Blair ain't beating none of them though, so this fight would never happen. Blair is a comedian. Okay, so yeah, so I did my I did my sales pitch right. I did my you know, used car or salesman pitch to try to get Blair and Boots. So if it happens, great. Um, but that's if Blair beats Broner, right? And if Broner wants a world title shot, let's make it happen, right? Yeah. Adrian Broner will only fight if he needs money. AB used to fight every other month. He was a dog a while. I think AB retires after the Blair loss. Yo, tell Ben to get in here. I mean, I think Ben is like out right now. So at some point, if Ben wants to get on here, you know, it's his platform, man. You know, Ben, you know, it's funny. Ben has actually done podcasts on here. So depending on how long you guys have been a Fight Hype fan, you go look back in the live stream. I think well, quite, I think around like Canelo Triple G time, right? Maybe the first or second one, I'm not sure. He's He's been on here. He's done podcasts and stuff like that. So, um, but I would love, maybe, maybe, I can talk with Ben and Ben can come here and we can just chat it up, do some boxing talk, right? Ruffle some feathers, right? Um, uh, let's see. You gotta win a title to become the boogeyman. Do you have to win a title to become the boogeyman? What? Beyond above the medium's asking. Like, do you really believe that? Because if so, then would you consider him a boogeyman because he has a title or he didn't officially win it from somebody? Boots versus Crawford should happen later. Boots, I build my following with big name guys outside the US. Giovanni beats Pitbull. Oh, you're talking about Giovanni. The recent last fight, you saying he beat Pitbull. Got it. Um, let me see. Give me one sec. Yep. I'll do it in five. Okay. BB's been stringing boots along. They gave him no names. I don't know what happened in that situation. You know, I'll be just honest and transparent. I don't know what happened. It seemed like he was, it would make sense for him to go to PBC, right? That's what everyone thought. So that's why this whole draw and his science of match and what it means for the what to wait landscape is very, it's, it's, I can't say I didn't see it coming because Bozy 
has Andy Cruz. He trains Andy Cruz, and Andy Cruz is with Matchroom, right? So that means the father of Dron Ennis is in talks with Eddie about business and things like that for a fighter that he trains. So maybe he saw something he liked in there that PBC or Steven Espinoza, I think really, I think Steven Espinoza has been the one that's been taking pictures with um, Dron Ennis. You know, Dron Ennis was signed to Showtime. So he wasn't a PBC fighter, he was a Showtime fighter. Um, he was signed exclusively to the network. So the relationship that Steven has with PBC and the network, he's you would assume that he would be able to manage that relationship and bring him over to Amazon, you know, PBC and the whole Amazon thing. So somewhere along the line, if we ever see Steven out and you know, out in the public at one of these press conferences, if not me or not someone on this platform, hopefully someone somewhere asked Steven, how come we couldn't get Dron Ennis on, um, what you call it, um, Amazon, right? Or PPC on Amazon. So someone will ask and we'll get some answers and we'll find out, hopefully, not in a political, you know, way. Uh, right here, I, beyond above media, I'm on a flight right now, but I'll be jumping on with Ron in the near future. I'm tired of people think someone else owns fight. Hi, I'm letting everyone know right now. This man right here, Ben Thompson, the man who did interviews with Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, you know, and he'll he'll come up with every once in a while with like a big old gem, like the Ryan Garcia interview when he had the the derma derma roller on his face. That's that's Ben Thompson. So when you hear Ben Thompson, that's the owner of Fight Hype. Um, me, uh, Ron Goodall, myself, um, when Sean was here. Uh, Hans, uh, Frankie, um, Rockman, uh, all these people helped build Fight Hype, right? And helped do interviews on Fight Hype. But there's only one Fight Hype owner, and that's Ben Thompson. And that's the one that's right there. So, not to distinguish me or anyone else as the owner, that is the clarity if you, did, if you guys did not know that. But as he says, he'll definitely jump on here. So you guys will have an opportunity to chat. We'll have some fun. Maybe we'll get some food and just chill on here and just vibe out. You can ask him a million questions and we just talk about boxing because I'm telling you right now, this dude Ben has so much knowledge about boxing that I'm lucky and privy to just have access to. And um, there's some things I can talk about. This is where some I get my knowledge from. And then, um, some of the things I'm not allowed to talk to because it's not, you know, official or not allowed to. But this dude, Ben, is very knowledgeable of boxing. And at the end of the day, I think he should be recognized in the Hall of Fame. Biased opinion, but that's just me. But um, that was a robbery. Dude was a uh, allowance contract and messed up the bag. Um, don't forget, A.B. and Dan Garcia came up together. Garcia bank account stack. Hitchens is trash. Damn. Everyone's allowed to have a bad night, right? Or an unknown opponent might be a lot better than what people say. This is what makes Matchroom exciting. And this is why I was kind of talking about Brandon. They do at least deliver fights, right? So I watched that fight. He ain't no headliner. Moton put on a show. You're talking about Cormel Moton? Moton? Am I thinking of someone else? Someone needs to interview Wilder. Someone will. Someone will. Rematch room, Eddie is a jinx. Ben, I've been around since boxing talk, my friend. Keep doing your damn thing. That man has been around for a long time. If he's talking about boxing talk, yes, he knows Ben Thompson very well. So, beyond, above the media, thanks for supporting Fight Hype. And obviously, thanks for supporting uh, Ben. Um, are you saying let Cormel Moton? If you're saying Cormel Moton, it's M-O-T-O-N. I just want to make sure... I'm not mistaken who you're talking about, but that's, yeah, Cormel is nice, dude. That last fight was very, he, he's definitely got my attention. And I got to see him spar Richardson Hitchens. I obviously don't want to talk about the sparring in details because it's sparring, sparring. But I was very impressed out of Cormel. And, and to be fair, I'm, I'm very um, 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 impressed with Richardson Hitchens, you know? I just think that maybe the Gustavo Lemos guy might be a little bit better than when we kind of give credit for but um but i know that richardson hitchens had a higher expectation so 
Fights like that, you're supposed to deliver. When you fight a guy that nobody really knows, that is not the time when you don't have your best performance, right? So, and he could be maybe the future world champion of the world. We don't know. But as a mark, like in the business of marketing, you don't have your bad performances or tough performances with guys you never heard of. And so, it, it, regardless if he was good or not, did, it didn't do him any favors. The young champions are being avoided by the cash cows and divisions. And that is boxing. Welcome to the live space. 100%. That won't be Eddie's fault if any would lose unless it goes to a highway dispute. Facts. All right. If you're as good as they say you are, you win your fights, right? Match, uh, match reminds me of 2000 boxing. Great fights, upsets, new guys emerging, giving themselves a new name, new players. Kind of like, like HBO boxing after dark, right? When you get those kind of weird upsets and stuff like that. Or like a Kelly Pavlik emerges and beats a Jermaine Taylor. I agree. I can see that. And that's why I don't I don't not match him. It's just when you talk about building stars, you have to be careful. And that's where some of the fans are like, well, that sucks. We don't want them to be coddled up, right? Like, so there's the business aspect, but then you also have to develop an actual good fighter. And that formula can sometimes either work out where you build a big star that beats everybody and he becomes that global phenomenon where he can entertain inside and outside the ring. Or you kind of set your guy up for one of the most hellacious ass whoopings on the big stage because they have been coddled to the big fight. And when it's time to show out, they don't perform. So, uh, yo, the good old days. They don't know nothing about those TNT chats. See, um, no, Haney Ryan, the cash cows are 140 and they want all the smoke. Who's needs a better PR social media team? He has everything to be looked at, like a Tank Davis and Crawford. He needs to fight a big name and drop him. So it's it's boxing, dude. That's that's the tough part, man. Like, can you become a big star without having a big fight? You can, but it's really hard. Um, let me see. I think. All right, cool. Real quick, I'm gonna go to a quick intermission. I gotta do something for my son, so I'm gonna throw this right here. I'll be right back.
appreciate you guys being patient and waiting. Like, you know? I'm back. I'm back. Uh, you know how it's like. If you got kids out there, man. You gotta. Kids come first, right? Uh, and then boxing second. Alright, let me. Let me catch up with the chat. Alright, alright. What do you guys, by the way, what do you guys think about the layout? Do you guys like this layout? I mean, I'm open for criticism, right? You like the colors? Do you like all the graphics? Do you want me to keep the chat up? You know, I'm still improvising, so. So just let me know, man. I, I'm open for criticism. That's all I'm saying, man. This is, this is not just a chat for me to talk to you guys. This is a chat for you guys to talk boxing and talk to me and yada, yada. So, all right. Let me bring myself back in here, man. All right. Also, do you like the music? Do you want music playing in the background? You not? Like, I'm all open for the feedback, right? So. All right, all right. All right, where is Sean? Sean left. Sean did his own thing. So, if you got questions, you can definitely go hit him up on his Twitter. Psycho Thomas, didn't AJ lose twice or does he have three losses? AJ has three losses. Shaggy started his own channel. I'm glad y'all doing lives. I can honestly see Boots versus Rocha. All right, because you're taking titles, that's unexpected. All right, all right, all right. Let me speed down here a little bit. All right, so outside of like Boots, right? Signing with Matchroom. Do you see other fighters signing to uh, Matchroom to fight Boots, right? Do you see anyone, does, does Boots bring, kind of like, you know, when Canelo signs somewhere, is Boots a good enough signing for other people to want to fight Boots and sign to him? Or is this just a great move that Matchroom got when they got a blue chip top champion that just not going to lose, you know? Because I don't think anyone's going to go over there and want to sign a Matchroom to fight Boots. Not at all. Like, why? Um, where can I catch up? Uh, let's see, let's see. Cormel Moulton versus Kid Austin? Cormel Moulton is, like, a lot smaller than what you guys think. Like, he's not a 135-pounder, so those things... You can skip all my comments, Ron. No, man. I don't even skip. I, I mean, I guess I'm skipping around a little bit. There's so much. I'm just trying to catch up, like, in modern chat, so. Um, no, 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 no. All right, so I'm just going to go already to the... So I apologize that if I missed a lot of the chat. I'm just trying to catch up, so. All right. Let me start right here. Boots was signed to Showtime. He was never signed to PBC. PBC. Facts. Never folded. So that was Steven Espinoza's kind of gig to kind of bring him over to PBC, you know? That was the relationship that Boots had. And now he's with Matchroom. Boots with Matchroom, definitely a smart move. I think we can all can agree on one thing. Boots is back. He's about to fight. He's about to fight in the summertime. And we, as boxing fans aren't upset with that, right? Because he's been out of the ring for a year. Now, the one thing that we also agree is we wish he was fighting Spence, Terrence Crawford, Keith Thurman, right? But there's a pattern. Most of those names outside of Bud are signed with PBC. So our biggest concern, while we're happy that Boots is back, is who does he fight? I hope like the boxing fan in his chat, that he, if he gets a tune-up in his first fight, that he can get a name that is sexier than Conor Ben. Because we get it. Conor Ben is big in the UK. It could be in Saudi Arabia. But I personally hope that he can get a, a name that I care for, man. And I'm not saying that the Blair fight is the fight or, or things like that. But I just hope that he can get some fights like a Virgil Ortiz, right? That makes sense. He is signed to the zone at this point, or Matchroom, which is on the zone. So if you can give me a Virgil Ortiz fight out this deal, I'm cool with that. I am cool with Jerron Ennis on Matchroom 
if we can get Virgil Ortiz. That's me being realistic. Not in this fantasy land of him fighting Bud or Spence or Thurman, all right? I'm in a realistic mindset. If they can build a, towards a Virgil and Boots fight, you did your job, Matchroom, as a boxing fan. You did your job. So, um... Cormac fun to be the Amazon poster child for boxing like Floyd, watch. Cormel is a spoon fed fighter. I wanna say spoon fed, right? But every fighter is match made, right? And his last opponent was tough. I'm telling you, dude, Cormel will be out here knocking out a lot of people and he's barred Tank and Shakur and Richard Hitchens and Keyshawn Davis. And they all say the same thing, like the kid is good. So for this kid, he faced Anthony Cuba, 7-0. Leo Santa Cruz was in his corner. To go eight rounds and take those shots, that was a gamed opponent. Like, I actually have a lot of respect for his opponent in that fight, so. Um, who else does Matchroom got Ron? I hate to say it, but like, nobody, man. Like, they don't have nobody for him to fight. So I don't know what they're gonna do with them. Nobody's signing to get knocked out, exactly. So they got him. Nobody wants to sign the match to fight him. And match ain't got no one from the fight, so. Ortiz, Daniels, and Barra's duck boots. I don't know. I would have to talk to all those guys. All right. All right. Hearn's going to showcase him first, right? Summertime, maybe a Philly fight, so. Many big names missed, and that's even worse. He's still, and he's been there and still got no names. He's been on Showtime for some time, so. He's kind of like a no man's land, because like I said, it sucks because he literally just missed, like all these guys are in totally different positions and different parts of their career. All these guys want other names besides him. So he looks around the opponents around him and he doesn't have anyone. And we're in the era where young line takes out old line don't really exist no more. It, it rarely exists anymore. So we can't pass the torch. There's no... Larry Holmes and Ali. There's no, you know, Hector Camacho sending Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, out. There's no Oscar De La Hoya versus Chavez. You know, there's no Canelo Alvarez versus Miguel Cotto, you know. And really, we almost got it. It was supposed to be Spence versus Pacquiao. But when you sit there and think, would Pacquiao be in Spence potentially? I don't know. But that was like the old line taking out, you know, the plan. So. We don't get that as much now, so. All right, um, shit, Ben is bigger than Lenar's. Yeah, you might be right there. Like, if they do it in Saudi or UK, Boos versus Ben is a huge fight, though. It is, it, it, listen, listen, I'm not, the Conor Ben is practically almost in the title of Drawn in it signs the match room, Connor Ben. Like somewhere like in those words, I see Connor Ben's name in there. So it, it would be insane if we don't get Connor Ben drawn in. It's settled. We got that. If we don't get that, then I really don't know what Eddie's doing as a promoter. But as an American fight fan, right? And and and, and I guess Unless, I guess you like that. Do you want to see Drawn in as two tune-ups and Connor Ben? That's the three, if, there was, if this was a three fight deal. Tune-up, tune-up, Connor Ben. Are you satisfied with that? Or would you be okay of Connor Ben and Virgil Ortiz? That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. I think the Virgil Ortiz fight satisfies many different audiences. It's a dual promotion fight. And it is an actual, genuine, credible opponent. And I'm not saying Conor Ben's not a credible opponent, but I hear more 50-50 talks about Boots and Virgil than I do with Conor Ben. I don't, but maybe that maybe that's just the Americans that I'm around often and I'm not around in the UK and, and, and I don't talk to many. But I know a lot of British people that tell me that they favor Boots over Conor Ben. So maybe that's just me talking as a fan and not more of a business, so. Oh, you gonna clown me? Boy said sexier. Pause, my guy. I don't know where I threw that in, but my bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it got me in a pause moment, bro. Ortiz should have happened last year. I agree. Get that old head fan base. 
These young men know all the bootleg streams. <laughs> Boost has become a lot more reserved in the last three fights. He's been less wild, really focused in boxing. Best boxer at matchroom. Uh, I think Cormel needs a little more defense, but I feel it'll come with time. I think he was forced into looking for the knockout, personally. Virgil ducked him. Six fighters ducked Boots. Boots versus Ben UK sells more than Haney versus Garcia. Damn, that's a hot take. The thumbnail looks like a crack confession part two. You talking about this one? Oh shit, I made the thumbnail, so. Uh, my bad, Boots. <laughs> wow, that's what a what a crazy comment. Boots doesn't sell, it's a fact. So yet, that's what I'm hoping. All right, Ben, this, all right, this is some fight height gems about to read. I think what's more important for Boots is to work on his exposure and marketing. Because outside of diehard fans, I don't know if anyone really knows him. And I think everyone in the chat who are really boxing fans know this. The goal to Jerron Ennis is not to entertain the boxing hardcores no more. It is figure out a way to tap into the market outside of it, right? Like this is this is really what it is all about. We know he's good. He's a blue chip fighter. Check. He's knocking everybody out and his fights are entertaining. Check. Does he have a market or global appeal outside of just boxing fans? Empty square box. Not check. So that's 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 what we need. So once he can get that over with you got a pound for pound like fighter who's knocking everybody in an in, in, in entertaining fashion who can draw and you're looking at potential one of the next boxing superstar all right but that's what eddie is supposed to do for him so i think boots is leaving optically will will make more guys leave especially with the inactivity of pb siders we will see all right there has been a lot of rumbles and concerns about Certain fighters not getting times and dates, and it might influence. You know, this might be an influence, but I don't know, so I, I can't speak on that. And um, but it's a it's a respectable theory. I do agree. Do do a calling show. You want to do a calling show? Should we do a calling show? I'm open to it. You know, if we do a calling show, you know, I would love to have some good back and forth. You know what I mean? Respectfully, right? I don't need no crazy trolling calls in, but all right. How about this, Tears? I'll do my homework. I'll look into it. Maybe we can do a call and show. And while I can ramble on forever, it does give me a break to not talk for a little bit. And I'll give you guys an opportunity to share your voice out here. Ben will on the zone for sure. Matchroom's going to have to work with Golden Boy and Top Rank to build boots. I get that, Ron. If we're talking about a couple years, it's been his entire career, though. I agree. Who guys beats the brakes off of Pac-Man? Uh, beat the brakes off of Pac-Man. They set Pac-Man up. You get what I'm saying? Like that was the passing the torch I was talking about earlier. Um, Pokemon he sold Atlantic City out. He's been fighting on his undercard. All Philly and Tri-State area came out. I, it makes sense. They should. Boots beats them though. If you're a fighter, and no matter how great you are, if you aren't generating money, it's going to be hard for someone to want to do business with you. Facts. That, that, that's just that's boxing you have to be able to figure out how to generate money prime example do you think jake paul beats do you think jake paul beats uh what is he a cruiserweight you think jake paul beats Usyk? like do you think jake paul beats tyson fury anthony joshua okay but you know what he beats a lot of fighters in how to generate money and if you can generate money, you can get a Mike Tyson fight on Netflix. Facts. It happened. We all, oh, Mike, oh, Jake Paul, you think you can get Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, you know, you know, it happened. Not officially, like they haven't stepped in the ring, but it's signed, sealed, and delivered. We're talking about it. Exhibition or not, he got it. You know how many people would love to fight Mike Tyson? Exhibition or not. Mike Tyson says, that's the guy that's going to generate money. That's the guy I'm going to do this with. So, I vote Ortiz as number one and Spence as number two as possible opponents. No Diddy. Oh, God. Here it comes. The No Diddy. Give me Me Machine, Avenesia, and Ben. That's a good lineup. That's a doable lineup. 
you know, that's the lineup that makes sense. So that's, but I want, uh, give me some Virgil Ortiz, man. Give me some Virgil Ortiz. I swear if Conor Van beats Jerron Ennis, I'm gonna put my head down and hide for a couple days. Cause I just don't see that as a competitive fight. But it's a money making fight, so it has to happen and it will happen. Ortiz ducked him as blue blood. He interviewed Virgil Ortiz and or Ortiz told him that he ducked him or is it cause Jerron said it? I don't think, I don't think no one ducked anyone there. I think the fight just hasn't build on, uh, build, it has a build up. Like it hasn't worked on becoming a big fight. Hardcore fans want to see it, but I think if Virgil Ortiz, just like Boots, build themselves up and come to a collision course, that would be massive, right? So, but I just don't think the time is right for that fight to be made, right? Connor Ben Ortiz is not a 50-50 fight. Boots washes them both easy. I myself favor Drawn Ennis to beat both of them, but I'm saying that the 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 public, unless I'm wrong, right? The public sees Virgil Ortiz a more competitive fight than Connor Ben. Unless you see something that I don't. Ron Bro, let's hear your opinion, my guy. I might have missed your question. Like I'm just everything's all like I'm just trying to get through. So hopefully I am I am giving my opinion on some stuff. It's coming porcupine, you'll see. It's already. Knowing Eddie, he signed Ron with hopes of making boots for his team by him next year. I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna leave this stream. Look, I don't want that fight to happen. It, it, to me, it just doesn't make sense. Like, as a boxing fan, right? Like, right away. But knowing Eddie, if I see Haney versus Jerron Ennis, I'm gonna plead the fifth right now. If that fight gets made, I will give a full breakdown of that fight. But it's not real. So it's, it's I don't I don't want to see it. It's pointless right now. Devin's at 140. He's a you know a sizable 140 guy, and Jerron is a extremely big 147 pounder. If Devin Haney was able to beat Jerron Ennis, that might be my pound for pound guy in one number two and number three. Anyway, Crawford, like that's, if Devin Haney beat Jerron Ennis, that is a bad boy. Not saying he's not up for it and not saying he can't do it, but that is the toughest challenge in Devin Haney's career if they would fight. And I'm putting that tougher than Teofimo Lopez, tougher than Javante Tank Davis, if he goes up to 147 or 154 to fight Jerron Ennis, that is a freaky, scary fight to be made. So, Matchroom deal is great because he gets the zone subs eyes now. He needs a title fight and he's 30 plus and he's not in a single title fight. So when you're a fighter and you, when you're in these type of positions, right? And I'm just going to be like honest and transparent. You have to somehow lower, and I want to say like lower your value, but you have to kind of have to take deals that don't necessarily fit you fancy, but to give you an opportunity to progress further in your career. And if what's holding you back from getting certain fights is that the money is you're asking for too much money or they're wanting more money and you're not willing to give it or there's certain demands that you're not willing to give in you may have to give into those things and sacrifice a little bit because if not you're going to be in a position where you're now just praying and hoping that someone gives you an opportunity we've seen it with a guy like winky Wright, which shane mosley had to give him an opportunity um trinidad had to give him an opportunity these guys don't just get opportunities because they're the champion or they're mandatory or they, you know, or even sign with the same promoter. Sometimes that those fighters have to take the back seat in order to get into the driver's seat at some point, you know. So hopefully Jerron Ennis and Eddie Hearn work something out where they can get a name that can make people go, "I want to see Jerron Ennis." That aren't boxing fans. Uh, PBC would suffer their cowardly ways and how they try to ruin Bud. I can understand not wanting him to run through your roster, but this is black on black crime at the highest level. 
Look, I'm telling you, I highly doubt PBC did not want to sign Jerron Ennis, okay? The way they were moving, the way he was on their cards and stuff, I highly doubt that. Now, the reason why they didn't work out or maybe there was a better deal or whatever, or, I don't know. I can't sit here and say I know. But I cannot sit here and think that PBC did not want to sign Jerron Ennis. I highly doubted that at all. But maybe Jerron has different plans, you know? Like, maybe they see something, something different. You know, people thought Devin he was going to sign the PBC with the Mayweather relationships, and he went to match him. Top ring. And back to match him. A nice fight on Golden Boy. You know, so... We don't know what their plan is, and maybe they're doing something that only they know, right? That's truth. Boots is the point. Uh, what's it? Boots at this point is playing catch up. Um, hell to the Nizzo. He wants money fights. Oh, I'm assuming you're talking about Bud. Money talks. Yeah, money talks. Everybody's saying that they would stream PPC pay per view instead of supporting this behavior is, 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 oh, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, people are entitled to what they want to support. So, what up, Palm for Palm Sports Entertainment? Salute. I appreciate you. Uh, uh, this dude has contributed also somewhere on Fight Hype. He uh, he was screen recorded. Um, it was this time where Jake Paul was doing a media workout, and uh, no, my bad. I seen Rockman was doing a media workout, and Jake Paul crashed it via Instagram Live. So appreciate you helping and contributing to the channel. He gave me the copy of that Instagram Live to post up. So he runs a YouTube channel. So for that. He supported us. I'll support him. So if you guys are boxing guys, give him uh, a chance and go check out his YouTube channel. Um, the stars aligned for Jake Paul. Did they ever? I mean, did they align not just for boxing but life? And his brothers help. His brother's name helped too. I agree. So just kind of like wrapping up, you know, wrapping up and kind of looking at how long have I? How long has this live stream been going for? Uh, cool. About two hours. I'm about pushing two hours, and I really appreciate you guys. Like, you know, I know there's still 141 of you guys in here, and um, I eventually I want to make this like an ongoing thing. So I'll start looking into maybe callers, right? If you guys want callers, we'll make it happen. Um, uh, oh, there's some more chat I gotta read, and then I'll I'll end that, and end the stream. But I'll look into callers, all right? I'll look into creating some sort of more interesting way of um, interacting, right? Oh, shout out my boy Rob. Hey, real quick, just letting everybody know, this is Rob Acosta right here, who's also been on Fight Hype. Um, he was a person who did, I think, what, five or six camps with Jerron Ennis. Actually, Rob, can you give me your opinion on Jerron Ennis signing to Matchroom? Can you just do that before we log and sign out, right? I don't know if you want me to call you. I can call you if you want. Just talk via audio or you can just write it right here. But this is Rob Acosta. He's worked like five, six camps with Jerron Ennis and helped him get into the position of, um, you know, into getting into a world title shot, right? And then, and then obviously he won the world championship. So 9-10. Um, I'm trying to think what does that mean? All right, maybe my the stream's delayed, so. Nine, 10, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. This is me, all right, I'm so sorry. He did nine and 10 camps with Ron in this. Okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me bow down to strength and conditioning greatness. Okay, he did nine and 10 camps. So, um, keep an eye on Rob Acosta, man, this guy. He's worked with a lot of, uh, call Rob. You saying call Rob? Should I just call Rob? All right, they want me to just call you, man. Uh, Acosta's man, always love his interviews. All right, be by your phone. I'm gonna call you right now. Um, If you have Zoom, I could do a Zoom, but I'll just call you right now, because it's. Cut that out, bro. <laughs> we live, bro. Huh. I'm doing it the ghetto way, if, if he answers. 
Yo, bro. Yo, I got you live on the, on a phone call. It's not all sex and <laughs> Zoom, but but, but um, would you would you would you want to give your thoughts right on the sim signing? Just personal opinion. Oh, no. no, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not really much to talk about. I just hope that, uh, go ahead, let's go. All right, I got you live. I got you on my mic, so. Just what's your thoughts on Jerron signing with Mastering Scene that you did, like, 9 to 10 camps with uh, Jerron? Say it again? Oh, what's your, since you did, like, 9 to 10 camps with Jerron Ennis, you were his strength and conditioning coach for, like, I don't know, four or five years. What's your thoughts on him moving to um, Matchroom? Hold on, let me take my headphones off. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I mean, I think I think it was a great move for for the team to to sign with uh with Matchroom. You know, it got it got him out of a, a little tough spot that he was in, and you know he went possibly with the better with the best option that was fit for, you know fitting his career. You know, now what the future holds that I don't know. You know what I mean? There is a lot of guys, a lot of potentials that he can fight at that at that uh, with Matchroom. And the great thing is, is that he'll be internationally recognized, which is also awesome. Um, but as far as what the fans want to see, you know, possibly, hopefully they can make that uh, Crawford fight in Saudi Arabia. And if that's that's not an option, then, you know, that's, you know, we'll, I guess they'll see what else what else is there. You know, obviously, a lot of the guys, they're on PBC, right? I'm sure that you hear, all right, you know, Barrios and Spence and Thurman. So, seeing him go to Matchroom, is there anyone for Matchroom? I know there's Connor Ben, and I know Bud's a free agent, but is there anyone really there for him that you see that can be made to help him become a more marketable star? Yeah, of course, man. I mean, the, the, you know, the Connor Ben is always a good, a good option. You know what I mean? Um, but of course, like, you know, he got to be clean, you know, you can't be testing hot and to be doing some, you know, fighting it at, at that high caliber, you know what I mean? So I hope, hopefully that's, that's on the table. Um, as far as any other 147 pounders, um, I know that Eddie would do whatever he, whatever it takes to try to make those fights happen with Crawford possibly going up to 54. It's a big chance that he could vacate all the belts. And if he does vacate all the belts, then that gives Boots the best opportunity to become, you know, undisputed in that weight division. And then, you know, I guess whatever options they have from there, either go to 54 or hang around 47 up until he's he's, he's ready to go up. All right. I kind of flirted out this idea. Right. And um, don't shoot me. Right. I'm just I'm just revisiting back in time. Um there was a time where you and me were in Vegas and Blair Cobbs walked up to Dron Ennis. <laughs> you remember that shit? Of course. I played it. I played it on the stream. So he's yeah, fighting Adrian Brown. I was commenting on it. That was actually a really fun day because that's when I kept saying he had a fishnet, uh, fishnet uh, button down on. Yeah. You're... Yeah. And I... <laughs> you know, it's, it's all in fun, man. It's all in fun. He didn't, he didn't disrespect anybody. You know, I just don't think that Blair was ready. I don't think that he knew how many people was there for him. You know what I mean? So when he started off talking the way he was talking, and then next thing you know, he got surrounded by a bunch of Philly fans, <laughs> that turned that turned dark really quick. You know what I mean? But he didn't mean no harm, man. Like, you know, he's he's out there. He got to promote himself. He's he's an entertainer. Uh, that That's a fight that could possibly happen, depending – how he looks with, with Broner. You know what I mean? Like, it, it all depends. Does it make sense? Like, you know, if he gets he beats Broner, is that now a super marketable name that, hey? hey to be honest, bro, at, at, at the point of just keeping uh, Boots busy, I think, you know, in, in all reality, with working with the team for four years, um, you know, they don't. They're definitely not going to duck any smoke. Whoever whoever steps up on, steps up to the table, to the podium, to the plate, to to the field, to the ring. It don't matter. Like they they they're willing to fight anybody. That that's something that I can vouch for for sure. Um, it's it's just all depends on who's willing to accept, and then is it still, you know, high risk with a low reward? 
You know what I mean? Now with signing with Eddie, could that still be an option or it will the reward match the high risk? You know, he's coming back fighting in summer. I'm only suspecting, right? I don't know. I'm not going to pretend I know. And I'm not saying that you know either. We're just, you know. Summer, Philly? Would would that be a crazy, like, would Philly show up to Jerron Ennis defending his title in the summertime? Like, would that be big there? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, but you know what? Like, in reality, there's a lot of fans here in Philadelphia that just, that, that just love him. You know what I mean? They genuinely love him. And, you know, he's, he's always kept it classy with, with his personality. He, he, he's not, he's very approachable. You know what I mean? And um, so with, with that being said, if he goes out there and he gets something where the fans can travel to, oh, best believe Philly will be in the building. I'm not saying that it's going to be 15, 20, 30,000, but they're definitely coming in the building. And if they're coming in the same way that the Eagles fans travel with their team, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be loud. Um, lastly, just um, a couple quick questions. Yeah, it just turned into like an interview, right? I'm sorry, I'm just used to doing interview mode. Um, obviously, he's going to be with Matchroom, which is on DAZN. Do you think Virgil Ortiz and Boots is something that Eddie can do, or probably not? Because you know, Eddie and Oscar, they don't always see eye to eye. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a fight that a lot of people would like to see. Um, I don't know. It's, a, it's it's solid, man. You know, I think uh, I think that would be a good fight, but it's it's going to be hard to really for any fighter out there to really challenge boots in IQ and other abilities. So it's it's tough, man. Like he's he's coming in, he's getting hot around a time where there's the competition of someone challenging him to, uh, to put his hand in his bag and pull out some nice tricks are, are not as, are not as great because his talent, you know, is, is, is really crazy. You know what I mean? So, um, I think the, the what, what everybody really wants to see is just Crawford and, and him. And then they will you know, go, go from there. Um, he's at one forty seven. you know, he's, 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 getting bigger do you see this year you know because you were a strength and conditioning coach from for about nine to ten camps and you know you kept them sharp and in shape for so many you know years and so many camps do you feel that pretty soon he might be a 154 pounder or or is his body still a 147 pounder from what you remember no i mean he's he's very athletic man so and and his his frame is pretty big too so um, I do know that um, you know he's 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 just strong all the way around. He's strong. He's really athletic, and you know if he makes the decision to go up to fifty four, then you know it's it's by choice that he can handle it. Not that he can't make the weight. He could definitely continue at forty seven for as long as he wants to, you know. Um, but in reality, like that that one fifty four. If if that's where his legacy can continue, then that's where it goes. You know what I mean? I I don't I don't really, you know, know exactly what right now what's going on, but um, but yeah, that that'll be that'll be interesting for him to go to fifty four, and then like who's at fifty four that can really take him, you know, that can really challenge him though. Who's who's there? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we got we got you oh. know we got the Charlos. They're on their way out. You know what I mean, and they they dominated fifty four for a while. You know what I'm saying. You got uh, Tim Zoo, you got Fondora, you got um, Erickson Lubin, you got uh, Brian Mendoza. You know, you got a guy, you got a few guys. Brian Mendoza is a tough dude. Um, that'd be interesting. You got Brian Castano. You know, there's a lot of guys at fifty four who can who can really put their foot on the gas. But you know, it's hard to go in there to compete against somebody that's well versatile well he's i was about to say well rob he's with matchroom so are any of these fights going to be realistic like is he gonna get these oh, fights i don't know whatever whatever they decide that's what they go with you know what i mean 
I'm going to entertain two. This is what the chat's been talking a lot, right? We all we had obviously all the Bud stuff and all that stuff. But these two names, because this match room, right? And these are, you know, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's really good at kind of creating fights that are very different, right? And what I mean different is like more about instead of protecting the fighters, they're just, he's just going to match them up, right? So Matias from 140 to 147 or Devin Haney versus Jerron Ennis. Like, do you like any of those? Like, because those are match room fighters at the moment. No. And why is that? Um, I, I like Devin Haney. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I like Matias. I just think that, um, Right now, it's just not a, a good idea to go up to to try to face Boots. Like, I understand what the fans want to see. You know what I mean? Kind of giving Haney that Floyd Mayweather type of treatment when Floyd was at that same age that Dev is in right now. You know? Um, but, you know, I think the fans got to pump their brakes a little bit and try to slow it down. Just let, let, let Dev take it one fight at a time. Let him build one accomplishment at a time and then go from there. Matias, right now, he got a card, what, June 15th in Puerto Rico? Yep. Yeah, let, 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 you know, let the fans worry about that card right now. And then, um, and then if any of those two do decide to go up to 47, then that's something to talk about at the moment. But right now, I just don't think that's, that's a conversation worth entertaining. Um, just for the reasons of, you know, the levels, the levels is just different. And you weren't at levels, as in not essentially skills, but no, size. No, no, not too? skill. It's, it's as far as like you know, you know, resumes, legacies, mm-hmm. and you know what what Devs is still accomplishing at one forty. Like it's like it's like almost to say like the fans are trying to rush him into a faster legacy. Like he's doing just fine what he's doing. He's he's taking it one step at a time. You know what I mean? So let 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 them enjoy that. Let the fans enjoy that, and let them keep it moving. But you know, it's hard. It's hard to gain the respect and the love from all the fans when everybody's never on the same page. You know what I mean? Like everybody just kind of hates on everybody. You got people talking about other people and stuff like that, and then try to sell a fight, but then don't go nowhere. So as of right now, you know, let Dev continue doing what he's doing, and then when that time comes and if he does move up to 47 and that's what they want to do then you know that's something to talk about but it's nothing like that gets talked about right now besides the fans and it's not worth entertaining you know the chat that i'm reading continues to bring up mean machine what about mean machine what about it as an opponent i mean it's a good name but i think that that was i think uh they try to get mean machine even when I was working with him, and it just never happened. Like they turned down the fight. I think they did. Not that I never, I never heard, seen, or was in any conversation of the Ennis family turning down anything. Correct. I, you know, I was, you know, that that has never been a, a, a thing. They never turned down any fight, as far as I'm concerned. Like I, I never heard anything. You know what I mean? He doesn't even turn down sparring. So yet alone, you know what I'm saying, for him to turn down fights. So I don't know. The only thing is, is, is uh, you know, it's, I mean, Mean Machine would be solid. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, I think the, the, the more of the conversation would be when he does go up against these opponents, who's going to give him the credit that he deserves? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because he does deserve recognition or his abilities, you know what I mean? And what they have accomplished as of right now, it's not his fault that, you know, he's so good at, at what he can do, he becomes a feared individual, you know what I mean? It's so some, you know, uh, like, you know, the Freddy Krueger shit, you know what I mean? It's like that one post I made at one time, you know what I mean? But outside of that, it, it's, it's, it's hard. Mean Machine would be a good option, but, uh, but it's all the matter of what their team decides, man. I, I'm honestly very confident um, that it don't matter, for my opinion, who you throw in there with him. He's, he's, I'm going to, I'm not, and I'm not saying this because of the relationship that I have and had with the team. 
I'm not trying to be biased. I just seen it with my own eyes with his abilities. I, I really believe like he's going to dominate no matter who's on the other side of that ring. Mm-hmm. The only challenge I really see is if he goes all the way up to like 60, 68. You know what I mean? But right now, I really don't see much. I don't. Well, just um, to catch up with you and what you're doing since I got you here, right? You know, and just what what are you doing? What can the fans expect from you? Who are you working with? What sports are you doing? Like, just give a little background up to date. Um, just right now, I'm just focusing on my amateurs right now. I got a couple of amateurs fighting in, uh, in some local shows coming up. Um, I got two pros that I uh, partnered up with... Um, with a close friend of mine, Adam, Adam Zayas, you know, he's, he has a good resume. He worked with Raymond Ford. He worked with Jason Sosa, he, you know, worked with a lot of guys. So, um, you know, we, we were, we're a team and uh, we got this one pro, Giovanni. Um, he fights at 126, Giovanni Telez. Uh, Te- yeah, Telez. And um, then I have Damon Tenorillo, who's a 154 pounder. You know, he just made his pro debut. Um, now we're scheduled to fight on uh, in Atlantic City June eighth on his card. So you know I got a I got these guys. I've been focusing on them, but uh, my biggest focus right now has been with my amateurs and the team. You know, all in house stuff. I haven't really been putting myself out there to try to get outside work or you know anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, and no one has really uh, needed any services and if they did you know the negotiations always tend to fall apart so you know i just stick with my guys and keep it moving well like, i appreciate you it's kind of like a like a drop-in interview i just saw you in the chat my girl was like yo man call rob right so why not right this is what this is what this is for right <laughs> i appreciate it man just yeah You're- you know just come you know it's, it's a good thing you know this is all good things and hopefully boxing changes and uh, we can try to leave the politics out and these fighters can get their shine and, um, you know, all these guys get the recognition that they deserve, man, that's all. Well, I appreciate you technically being my first interview live on this. So you're, you're essentially a yeah, alumni. You know funny? Didn't, didn't we always talk about this, though? We did. <laughs> yeah, we always talked about this and it's, it was just funny. It, it was funny, too, because when you went, I was I was going through my uh, uh, some comments that people left on some other, other stuff. And I saw, I accidentally clicked the live at the top. And I saw that you were live. So I said, all right, let me see what he's talking about. And then I didn't expect all this to happen. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, you know, if you call, I'm going to answer the phone. So Yeah, my girl says good to hear you from you. So, you know. We'll, uh, yeah, it's likewise, likewise. She says you're the man. So, like I said, I appreciate you. You know, because, you know, we got to chat. People, you know, they're, they're here. You're privy to stuff. And you have, you know a solid opinion so um like i said i appreciate you dropping in and it's a great way to end this so you know thanks for making yeah, the yeah, live sure i'll be i'll be out vegas uh pretty soon man i want to take a couple of my guys out there to get some work so you know we'll be traveling to different gyms and you know of course i gotta check out my boy larry so um you know we'll we'll, we'll see what's going on perfect well let me know you know and then maybe we can do something maybe I, i'll bring you by you be live with me or something so we'll just yeah no problem bro. all right man take care yeah, you too. All right, look at that. You know, I mean, look, I do have some graphics, right? Hear me out. Shout out first and foremost, Rob, Aca- uh, Rob Acosta, right here. We have a lot of his interviews on here um, on Fight Hype. This is right here. This is what he looks like. Hence why I put it up. And he's a really great person. Like um, he was, you know, at one point. I, I don't. I'll let him kind of say it. There's a lot of stuff that I know about uh, things like that. Um, that who he almost worked with and certain things, certain fighters and stuff like that. He, I'll let him speak and I'll ask questions. And um, But yeah, Rob has been an instrumental part of Jerron Ennis. So if you're a fan of Jerron, then you're probably a fan of Rob. You just didn't even know it. And um, like I said, I'm going to have graphics. I'll work on maybe like getting a call and thing. Because look, I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek. Uh, the ones that are remaining. Look at this. Look at this. All right. This was a little thing. I tried to do a Demetrius Sleet alive, right? This is an example. But he wanted to do the interview off live, so I respect it. But I can put myself here. I could put a video here, and I can have a guest on the side, right? Pretty cool, right? 
But what if I want to have like a side by side conversation, right? Boom. All right. What if I want to have a whole panel? Like this looks like first take kind of, right? I got three right there. What if we really want to debate and get four people? What if I get three fighters, right? I got three fighters sitting right here and all of them are debating and stuff like that, right? Maybe we can, you know how there's fighting commentators, like fight commentators, like we got the Bradleys and we got the, um, uh, when there was Andre Ward and the Roy Jones. So, like maybe we can coin our, you know, let me move this back. Maybe we can coin our, actual here yeah, i got so many graphics this is what yeah 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 there we go how about this does this work all right cool all right how about we spend some time as a chat to coin our new fighter commentators right and what i mean by that is we'll still keep the same fighter commentators out there we'll still have the sean porters the tim bradley's the andre wards the Roy Jones, the Chris Algeri, the Paul and Malinagis. Keep them. It's not a replacement. But let's add. Let's like let's create and add our own boxing real-time fighter commentators. Because a lot of these fighters no longer fight. So they have the experience, they have the championship backgrounds, they have the notoriety. But we don't really have any of those fighters that commentate while they're still fighting. Like when Roy did it or Dre did it. You know, um, I think Tarver did it a little bit. He was still kind of fighting commentator. Lennox Lewis might have a little bit. Sugar Ray Leonard did. But those type of guys where we get fighters to commentate a little bit, break some stuff down, debate, but they actually would then go out and actually fight. So let's let's do that, right? Let's do that. Let's I don't wanna say these are auditions, but I'm gonna start looking for some guys who are, you know, top five, top 10, maybe hopefully, and have them kick off an opinion piece where then at that point, don't forget, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot Abner Mars. See, there's a lot of them. So I'm glad, Abner Mars, George Foreman. Um, there's so many, and I, I, I feel already bad for even doing this because I know I always forget. Anytime I make a list, I forget people and I don't want to make it sound like they're not as important. But, we can do something like that. So if you guys have any ideas of fighters you like that have really good insight, break things down, maybe like how they look as in like a commentary, we can do it big here too. So um, maybe shoot some in the comments after the video goes live. If you think of anything, um, I'll probably start using my social media. I'll start using my Twitter, right? So this is my Twitter. Yeah, see, send, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go back to my other transition. Uh, my man Frank says, send your resume, right? So if you're a fighter out there and you think you can do it, right? You think you can have a good comment take, right? Um, let me put this up. And I'm gonna be sexier with all this stuff. Where's my boy Frank right there? All right, he said, where is it right there? Send your resume, right? So let's do that. Let's do that. Get Uncle Al in here. Look, if I ever got an interview with Al Heyman, if I ever got an interview with Al Heyman, I think I think I would change the boxing game completely. Anyone who gets an interview with Al Heyman. Angel Garcia. My man said Angel Garcia. Get Zab Judah. I mean, Zab Judah. Danny Garcia. Maybe. Maybe we can get some Danny Garcia. You guys like Danny Garcia? Uncle Al. Oh, that's what you meant. Uncle Al needs to explain how he lost Ennis. Yeah, that's that's a loss. But it's boxing, right? People, it's a loss everywhere, right? So we'll see how this plays out. I appreciate you guys rocking with me, right? This is a very long, um, constructive live. I'm getting better at it. My girl said Al is a unicorn. It is a very constructive Jeff Mayweather. I think he has like a deal with like the Mayweather channel, right? So I don't know if I can, can get that. Frank says Zab. I was like a creator of Bitcoin. He might not be real. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I'll start pitching the idea to some people say, hey, what do you guys think? Robert Garcia would do it. Ramiro Perez says, yeah. Would Robert Garcia do it? I know he has a podcast too, so.
a lot of these guys have like their little platforms and and doing their thing very great too i didn't mean to say like little but like they're building solid platforms for boxing fans and, and, and becoming content creators so buddy mcgurt like yes nicely done ron you're like but dude i appreciate it i'm just i'm just being myself you know i'm not i know i'm not always going to be agreeable and i might not be liked by everyone but that's fine mikey garcia would mikey garcia be a good commenter okay all right Loma's dad, dude, I'll be honest, I've never even interviewed Loma's dad, ever. Uh, I'm trying to think who might have interviewed Loma's dad. Yeah, Loma's dad doesn't have a lot of interviews from what I remember, so. Keith the Duck does more talk. Keith's a great commentator, right? And he's an active fighter. K9 would probably be down. Duck Fisher clone. I've gotten up before. You know, there is a compliment to that, so I, I understand where you're going with that. I just like to be my own individual, that's all. Sean Porter's dad, Kenny Porter. I don't even know if he does does anything on his own son's podcast, so it'd be kind of like, I don't know if Kenny would do fight hype over his son's podcast, right? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Keith Thurman actually sounds good. He talks more than he fights. Keith is good. I like Keith. I don't know. Maybe Keith. I know Antonio Tarver does his Tarver take. So maybe Antonio Tarver. Um, so. Um, whoa, yo. What if we had Roly? Would you like Roly as a commentator? Roly Romero as a commentator? I think that would be fun. Right? I think he'll be open to that. Right? So. Alright. Well, look. Uh, I can drag this thing on all day and I have to catch up on some news. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything on Twitter and Instagram because I'm sure there's people reacting to this whole Javon and this news and stuff like that. So once again, I definitely mean this from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you guys rocking with me. You know, this is a growing pain. This is my social media right there. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I don't tweet. Um, that's my Instagram as well. I don't Instagram either, but maybe I'll start doing it, you know, so right here. You can follow me right there. James Tony, Rolly the Goat. Yeah. Julian Jackson st still speaks well. Yeah, get Rolly. Rolly, he will want a paycheck. Man, Rolly, Rolly and Fight Hyper like like this. So, you know, Rolly's a real one. Rolly, I know that he does antics and stuff like that, but Rolly is probably one of the most genuine people I've met covering boxing. He's really a good hearted person and if you ever got an opportunity to talk to him and trust me everyone who knows Roly personally will speak highly of him, highly of him so shout out to Roly for fighting getting the, doing a pit bull fight and just being just your authentic self I can't be mad at that but like I said I can do this all day I appreciate you guys I'll if a, a good topic comes up I might come back today if not I'll try to do something tomorrow morning um if you guys like these shows, just keep an eye out. Um, I'm thinking somewhere maybe we're 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. ish. Depends on how I wake up, and you know, I got a, I got a, a, a newborn baby, so um, just kind of working out the father stuff. But I will try to make this a daily, consistent thing first, and then maybe I c we can pick a slot where it's always this time at that time, and we'll do it. But Roller versus Ryo. Winky Wright. Yo, I love Winky Wright. That was one of my favorite fighters growing up. It sounds cliche. His name was Ronald Winky Wright. My name was Ron. So how can you not? Like, little silly child and stuff. But I love Winky Wright as a fighter. So, but, um, yeah, like I said, I'm rambling now. So I want to make this all day. So I appreciate you guys. And, uh, peace. Appreciate you, Napoleon, for that, man. Man, uh, Frank, after this is done, put all the names, if you can, in the comment section, man. Chop Chop Corley, please, please. Do get Paul Williams, Beyond Above Media. Yo, Paul Williams, yo, I love this. Let, fuck it. We will create our own commentators. All right? We will create the new commentators in this game. All right? I think a lot of guys deserve it. A lot of guys um, really deserve that opportunity, so... But other than that, y'all, peace.
Hey, yo, my bad. <laughs> now it's officially ending. My girl caught me with the BRB stream. The stream is officially ending with the stream. Oh, it's great. Now it's officially peace. Appreciate you guys as always.